You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. Harbor, he's taking a shot. Downfield, wide open end zone. Caught touchdown. It's Malachi Coleman. Nebraska, they make you play with all 11, right? Heinrich gets the snap. Back to throw. Has some time. Steps, throws, pass. Caught by Fedoni for 20. He's to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Nebraska. Thomas Fedoni leaped in the air clutched the football, and then had open turf into the end zone. We have to continue to go like this and just say we're playing as the Huskers. Purdy to give to Grant. Grant, left side. Another score for the Huskers. Uh, these guys are learning by fire. Harper keeps a seam. Harper lowers his head into the end zone. A touchdown for the Cornhuskers. This is a personal deal. You know, I, I hear stuff about the offense and everything, and, like, he – we are not as good on defense if it was if it weren't for those guys. Another low snap. Allmeyer steps up in the pocket. Throws middle. He's got his man. And a first down as the ball comes out. Tommy Hill has it going the other way. Gets to his own sideline. Another big turnover for Nebraska's defense. These guys fight. They fight from the University of Nebraska. That went for 35 yards. And Keldrick Moody, welcome to Lincoln, Nebraska. The introduction made by Deshaun Singleton. You fight if it means you fight. You fight, you fight, you fight. And you take for what we want. And after this fight for something good to happen. Who's the guy supposed to make the difference? I'm surrounded by it. And you guys freaking do it. We on the same page? Yes, fight, fight, fight. And if we die, <laughs> we die. I think you, he added an F-bomb in there. With you freaking guys. It's like East Coast really shows there on mm-hmm. something. Whenever, whenever he says freaking, it's like, you freaking guys. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching that. Sounds like it has some G's in there. Yeah, it's uh, I'm watching an episode of Sopranos every time he says, you freaking guys. Uh, love it, though. Good stuff there, Shano. I'm Ravi Lula. This is Andrew Rogers. And we are with you here on Hurt Out Sports Radio on a Friday. It is Friday. Getting ready for some football, some hockey, some high school football, some college football, some hockey. What else we got going on this weekend? Uh, Union Omaha. We're going to talk Omaha to the, on Saturday. We've got, we got football and football. We were getting it covered from, mm-hmm. from every angle here on AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri World Series. World Series starts tonight. I mean, it's a busy time of year. We are off and popping. And I'm excited. What's it's popping? Brand What's new it? wheels. Just <laughs> popping. I got options. I can pass that like Stockton. Like John? Mm-hmm. John Stockton? Mm-hmm. From Little Jack Harlow? From Gonzaga? Um, we have a good show for you here today. Uh, busy show. We've got all of our regular Friday guests plus, you know, couple extra as some rainbow sprinkles on top yeah right? we've got a little extra accoutrements on there we've got uh michael excuse Rose. you uh, bless you <laughs> uh it is eight o'clock we've got michael rose ivy he's gonna help us preview purdue former husker he coaches high school football down in missouri now 8 15 we're gonna talk to marty cordero he is the president of union omaha as well as the omaha storm chasers mm-hmm. but union omaha is a big semifinal match tomorrow at 8 45 we're going to talk to steve oh excuse me got a little hiccup there that was weird we're going to talk to steve gardner of usa today sports he covers baseball we're going to preview the world series at nine o'clock actually the whole nine o'clock hour we're going to have our very own mike Sauter. he is going to be in here mikey talk, talk about the high school football playoffs which kick off tonight yeah, Class A uh, underway, Class B, Class C. I think eight man started last week. Eight man started last week. Um, yes. But all the eleven man, uh, all the eleven man kicks off this, tonight. This is going to be a. I think they do. And I'm sorry if I sound like a little out of the know. Mm-hmm. Class D has football, right? Yes. Yeah, that's okay. eight man. Is when well, you get to class. Well, D that's is, D. D is eight man. Yeah. 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 D one, D two. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. He is eight man mm-hmm. there? I yeah. I'm pretty sure C is. My 11. head's in basketball mode. A little yeah, bit, a little I'm, bit when it comes to trying to decide for the playoffs. So that helps. I'm okay. pretty sure C is 11 man also. Uh, C's but, 11. Yeah, but eight is where it, D is where you drop to eight. And then I think I'm not. I want to say I don't remember if they do six man in, in Nebraska anymore. They used to have six man football. Six man too. football. How big was the field? 
I don't remember. Honestly, I've never seen a six man football game in my life. If I'm being totally honest, I've seen eight man because it's it's like wildly entertaining. It's six sort of man. like arena ball. So is six man three on the line? I have no idea. Two outside, and or is it two on the line, or just one like center? I have no idea. You got uh, to match it up, right? It's got to be three on the line. I would, it's either one or three. I would think so. So if you've ever watched six man football, please give us a call. On the Warhorse Sportsbook Hotline, 888-638-4876. I'm so curious. I'll now. be honest. I don't know what I don't know, and I've never seen it in a six-man football game. I've watched eight-man football. It's really interesting. I like watching it. Um, it almost has to be one, because I think eight-man is three on the line, right? Yes. But so can you have more? Can't you put more on the line? I, I don't know. I'm fairly certain you could have as many on the line as you really as long as it's even on on both sides. Yeah, I'm not like, sure. If you wanted to run, why why would well, why would it be a problem I, to have Well, it's kind of like five, the same deal with 11 man, right? Like you can only have so many six. on the line. So you might have to be like offset like a tight end. Yeah, yeah, probably. But I'm not sure the the exact rules on it. Um I have watched 8 man football and it's a lot of fun because it feels kind of like arena ball. I know, I never really pay attention though to how many people are on the line. I don't when, either. I, when I covered eight man um, out in Sioux City, I was like, "Oh, the only people I have to pay attention to are the quarterback." Yeah, uh, the skill because I'm, I'm I'm building a highlight reel. Yeah, I'm building a highlight tape essentially. Yeah, and uh, the quarterback tended to be the one yeah. that would either just do QB keeper or mm -hmm. was like the uh, he was the best on the field. Mm -hmm. Let's just start by saying that. And then maybe one wide receiver. Yeah. Like there were two guys that you're like, okay, that's what I have to pay attention to. These are the two. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's it on both sides. Yeah, absolutely. And then the free safety <laughs> basically. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that was the guy that played quarterback on the other side. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all the 11 man football kicks off tonight. Well, and this afternoon, you got some four o'clock games in there too. Uh, and then we've got Matt Verzal. He wraps up the show on Friday, as always, at 9.45. Uh, we do have a little bit of time for you to join us in between all of that. As I mentioned on that War Horse Sportsbook hotline, 888-638-4876. You can email us. I'm Ravi at HerdAtSports.com, or it's Andrew at HerdAt.com, or you can hit us up on Twitter. I'm at R-A Lula, and you are... Andrew Rogers CC. There you go. Andrew Rogers CC. Thick with two C's, Andrew Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that actually kind of works now. Not not the thick uh, <laughs> reference that, that Robbie just some more protein. Uh, you did that. <laughs> no, it's like when you like CC somebody on an email. Like, I feel like that's what you can do on the tweet. Like, you just CC me. Yeah, just CC Andrew Rogers on the tweet. And we'll be good to that's go. That's how I'm going to roll with that from now on. Like, yeah, it might used, as well. It used to be coffee and cream. Well, like, sure. The, the, the full reason for that, which I have uh, my beanery coffee with me this morning. Oh, so you've got your coffee and cream mm -hmm. from the beanery as always. I had my Colombian roast. You got you went Colombian this mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is uh, medium. I think it's. I know almost nothing about coffee. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, it's medium. <laughs> medium. Yeah. Mix, mix in a little bit of hazelnut. Right. That thing wet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't need to be doing that today. It's way too cold. It to is. Doing this today. It is. Hands little, are in the pocket today. It's a little chilly out. I'm, I'm what a great day for high school football playoffs. I'm rocking the bomber jacket. I'm ready to go. Uh, nice, staying nice and warm out here. Um, all right. I think we just need to jump into the thing that we've been texting about for the last 24 hours. <laughs> what have we been texting about? Uh, so, as you might imagine, the Michigan thing has more wrinkles to it. Whoa! It's. Uh, <laughs> You know how we thought it it might it might have some more wrinkles. Oh, it does. Well, it started with the Nebraska angle. Yeah. So mid afternoon. No, this was toward the. Was like it toward the evening? The evening? Yeah, okay. This, this was like dinner time. So in the evening, I Andrew and I apparently saw a tweet at almost simultaneously uh, from the Omaha World Herald talking about how the Michigan uh, cheating scandal has now has now invited Nebraska into mm -hmm. the chat. Uh, and as Coach Prime would say, now it's personal. Um, apparently Connor Stallions, the, uh, spy extraordinaire has, it, was it attended. Seems like, it seems like a novel at this point. It Let is me. not quite as long as his manifesto, but still a novel. I'll tell you what though, by the time this is over, we're going to have a really nice book. Uh, we're going to the biggest scandal in college football. We're going to have an incredible movie. Like Aaron Sorkin's going to write this thing. It's going to be great. I'm excited about it. Starring um, Jim Harbaugh, <laughs> Kevin James, who's known for his work as, as Sean, football coaches. As Sean Payton. <laughs> no, you know who's going to play Ryan Day in this, though? You know, did you watch Suits? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
it's Lewis lit is Ryan Day. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis Lit is Ryan Day. The guy that looks like a tuna. Like his mouth is yeah. angry all the time. He's he's got the Ryan Day face though. He's, he does have a Ryan Day face. Uh that's so that's I haven't done any of the rest of the casting. I mean Harvey Specter, I guess, could be a considered a Jim Harbaugh, but he's not old enough. He's too pretty to be Jim Harbaugh. You need somebody a little bit more like every man to be Jim Harbaugh. I'm thinking like uh he's probably too old, but somebody in the like realm of a Paul Giamatti. Okay. Look wise, like pretty average looking. <laughs> pretty average. I mean, listen, nice. <laughs> listen. I mean, I'm trying to think here who would be a good Jim Harbaugh. Just like an average looking dude. Oh, no, I got it. Go ahead. Friday Night Lights, Kyle Chandler. Oh, that'd be a good one. He's Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, 59 years old. It's it's absolutely Kyle Chandler. He's got the football. Uh, the yeah, football man, acumen it's from about Harbaugh. the same age. He's 58. It's perfect. Look at him. That's That's Jim Harbaugh. Come on. I mean, he's Kyle he's a Chandler. Little, he's a little prettier than Jim Harbaugh, but that's what movies do. But see, do. the problem is I would associate that too much with Friday Night Lights. Clear eyes, And I hearts. almost think Clear you eyes. would need somebody different so that you aren't thinking about Friday Night Lights when watching this. Listen, he's a good enough actor. I think he can pull it off. He's I'm not a saying good, he he's a great actor, off. yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say he can't pull it off. I'm just saying, hey, guys, there could be somebody else. Cough, cough, Kevin James. <laughs> Jonah Hill is <laughs> Jim Harbaugh. Honestly, like Brad Pitt could probably pull off Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, yeah, I could see it. He's uh, you know, he he prettied up he pretty prettied up Billy Bean a little bit. You mm-hmm. can pretty up Jim Harbaugh. Um I do like Kyle Chandler. Who I'm trying to who else, who are the main players in this one? Ooh, who plays Connor Stallions? Let me let me see what Connor Stallions looks like again because I don't Connor really... Stallions is a young like in shape guy let's go with like 30s like early 30s um let's go with channing tatum no too too pretty yeah but you, you got to think about like you, i'm thinking you, like miles you, you look teller. at channing tatum and <laughs> miles teller <laughs> you look at channing tatum <laughs> and you think okay that guy like military movie guy Right. Yeah. Could easily transition over to a role like that. Younger looking, good looking guy. Yeah. Channing I mean, you Tatum. know who he kind of looks like in this photo here? He kind of looks like our other guy. He kind of looks like Mike from Suits a little bit with the beard uh, he, with the, a little. Yeah. Bit. But Mike doesn't have facial hair like uh, he, Mike from Suits is like, not in Suits. But later right. on, the yeah, actor but, does Patrick Adams. I think mm-hmm. his name is. Yeah. No. Um. Who else here? How about Kyle McLaughlin? Now he'd have to he'd have even, to cut he'd have to color his is. hair. Kyle who's, McLaughlin. Who's Kyle McLaughlin. Is he the one that sings in an arm? He's in the from arms of an angel. And, and maybe I didn't say his no, last that's name. Sarah McLaughlin. Oh no, Kyle McLaughlin's way too old. But I'm saying he'd have to color his hair to Wait, be to, to be Connor Stallions or no, Jim to be Jim. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're talking uh, about Connor Stallions. He could maybe be Jim. He could maybe be Harbaugh. I don't know if he's like forceful enough to be Harbaugh. Like he's got a little bit meeker of a voice. I feel like sometimes. I was. I thought you were talking about to be Connor Stallions. I was like, "What are you mm-hmm. talking about, dude? That guy's like 60. <laughs> right. I was so confused, Shane. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, <laughs> just to, to create confusion. <laughs> um, but anyway, so here's here's the latest updates on this ridiculous story that I just love more and more every day. Mm-hmm. So the first thing that came out, actually, the first thing that came out was mid afternoon. It was the TCU thing. That's the first thing I sent you. Was that TCU? had they knew that Michigan was cheating and so they were giving dummy signals in that uh, college football playoff game to throw Michigan off and my immediate thought was did a dummy signal lead to the two pick sixes that was the very first thing I thought Mm -hmm. Uh, and we'll never know but I like to think in my heart that it did so that was the first thing was that everybody apparently that TCU talked to was like, yeah, they're going to cheat and steal your signals. You need to change those. Which is pretty funny. It's hilarious it's that it's pretty just funny. everybody knew. Okay? So that was number one yesterday. We had three pretty major reveals yesterday. Number two, Nebraska enters the chat. Connor Stallions attended f- at least five Nebraska – or he bought tickets to at least five Nebraska games. The Four of those were at least attended. One of them, uh-huh. the t- tickets weren't scanned. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that messes with your sellout streak at all. I'm just I'm just saying. But the four of those games he attended, 
here's where it got weird with Nebraska. Two of the games that he bought tickets to were Nebraska versus Michigan, mm-hmm. which does not make a whole lot of sense as to why he would need to buy tickets to view Nebraska when they're playing them that day or obviously to see Michigan. And then the third development drops yesterday that starts to make that make sense a little bit. And that's that it appears Michigan was leaking signals to other teams, not just using them for their own benefit. And there is not hard evidence on this yet, but there is some circumstantial stuff that's pretty appealing. And the basically the thought is, and there's a decent amount of circumstantial evidence for this, is that Michigan was leaking signals to teams to help pave a more favorable path to and in the college football playoff. Right. And the biggest example was South Carolina, which ties it even, <laughs> which ties it back to Tennessee. Yeah. Which ties it back to Nebraska even more so next year or last year because Marcus Satterfield was at South Carolina at this time. So the, they, we know for sure that Connor Stallion purchased tickets to Clemson and Tennessee last year. Those two teams probably were not their biggest concerns in the college football playoff. So that is a little bit of a strange, uh, a little bit of a strange decision there. But for which games? For the Clemson Tennessee game. Right. So right, at the time, yeah. I think they mm-hmm. were both still sure. in the hunt. Uh-huh. Right. The next two weeks in which South Carolina the week before had only scored six points against uh i'm trying to remember who they played before tennessee last year but they had only scored six points in the game before they played tennessee last year and then they go out they play tennessee it was florida they scored there was 38 to 6 they lost to florida the week before they played tennessee they go out the next week they play tennessee who, by the way, is dramatically better than Florida, although the defense not incredible, so that needs to be said. And they score 63 points against the number six team in the country after scoring only six points to unranked Florida. You know what else is strange about that South Carolina-Tennessee game? What's that? Apparently, that's the only game all year that South Carolina's defense wore wristbands. Mm -hmm. The entire defense. Why would you need wristbands, Andrew? Well, so that you could know, like, uh, what what a play is, what signals were yeah, being called, yeah, what a play is, I like mean, what, that, what plays being uh, what plays being audible to, things like that. That might mm-hmm. be helpful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and look at their South Carolina scored sixty three points. Yeah, and their quarterback threw for four hundred and thirty eight yards and six touchdowns. And then and the no week after he threw for like three hundred and seventy. And the weeks before that, I don't think he topped two fifty. I don't think he topped two twenty. Two twenty. Yeah, it's it's not impressive. Knock him down even more. Um. The following week, they knock off number 13, South Carolina, 31-30, or number thir- uh, 13, Clemson. And those were the final two games of the season. Those mm-hmm. were the best games of the season for South Carolina. And those were directly after the alleged leaking of, of information to South Carolina from Connor Stallions. So here's why I, I think this goes back to Nebraska, right? Because the first thing I thought before I even heard this last development was, okay, if he's scouting Nebraska-Michigan when Michigan's playing Nebraska, is he giving that to someone else? Absolutely. Because that's the only thing that makes sense, right? Well, so, okay, there's a couple of things. Um, Yeah, tell me what I missed. One, and was it 2021 when uh, two people were in the stadium against that game? Yes. uh, Against Nebraska, but they didn't have, like, great views of – the sideline of Nebraska, I believe is what the article read. Um, I'm, I'm trying to go back and, and think. Let's see if I have the information written down. Oh, okay, I do. Uh, the tickets were also in the northwest part of the North Stadium, not affording the best view of Nebraska sideline. Um, so that was in 2021. And then in 2022, that was the year that tickets were not scanned mm-hmm. uh, for the game. But both seats were low near midfield. In, in West Stadium. Yeah, where you would have wanted them to be to view this, the sideline. So I actually think it was more more than just having information on Nebraska. Mm-hmm. In in 2021's case, I think it was pretty apparent when the two people were actually in the stadium mm-hmm. versus 2022. Uh, 
but there were times in 2022 where he purchased um, tickets to Illinois and Minnesota the weeks leading up to the Nebraska Michigan game. And those were the ones that actually weren't scanned in mm-hmm. this whole thing. But in 2021, here's what I want to get to. So Iowa won the Big Ten West in 2021. They were seven and two. The team that came right behind them, mm-hmm. well, actually, there were three teams Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Purdue. They all ended six and three in conference, right? In conference yeah, play. Yeah. But Wisconsin was actually the better of the teams. Uh, that's that year, mm-hmm. only Iowa, um, was able to have less losses in the column, mm-hmm. even when they lost to Wisconsin that year. Yep. So if you look at Iowa and you say, okay, Iowa seven and two, they lost to Purdue and Wisconsin in October, and then they beat Northwestern, Minnesota, Illinois, and Nebraska at Nebraska, the final game of the year, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, why do you, why would you go to the Nebraska, Michigan game? Mm -hmm. Why would you have somebody in the stands for the Nebraska, Michigan game? Because I doubt it was for, hey, family, let's go watch. Sure. Could have been, but possible. But when we're looking at Connor Stallions, there seems to be a different motive every time he has a a seat booked Mm -hmm. in a stadium. All that makes sense to me is he, grabbed game film of Nebraska, of Nebraska's sideline, mm-hmm. sent it over to Iowa because they didn't want to play Wisconsin in the Big Ten championship game because they were the better team in the Big Ten West that year. Mm-hmm. And they knew they could get past Iowa, which ended up being what, like a 41-7 to game, 42-7 to game, something like that? 35-3, I think. Well, so it was a, it was a blowout. 42-3. Right? 42-3. 42-3. Yeah. An absolute blowout. Yep that year in the Big Ten Championship game mm-hmm. because that would solidify their spot and better position in the college football playoff at the same time. Mm-hmm. So there's this huge there's this huge scheme that's taking place. And and the mastermind behind it all being Connor Stallions and, and maybe more. Allegedly there, there could be there could be hidden yes. some people behind the curtain pulling some strings. I'm guessing this he could goes, be the face man. Yeah or the fall guy one or the or other. the fall guy. Yeah. Um it, maybe he's a little bit both. both. Yeah. Uh, but in this case, that's what makes sense to me. If you're going to grab any sort of signal about Nebraska, it's to give it to Iowa. another Big Ten West team, ergo Iowa in this example, mm-hmm. so that they can beat out Wisconsin, who Wisconsin beat Iowa that season 27 to 7. 27 to 7. Like Wisconsin, that, that's a commanding victory. Wisconsin beat Nebraska 35 28. Iowa beat Nebraska 28 21. And Minnesota had to pick up wins down the stretch in order to be in that in in the yeah. six and three spot. So that wasn't even a worry. No, uh, but I'm sure I'm sure they had something on Minnesota that oh, year. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and then you look in 2022, and in 2022, Purdue was the team that came out as six and three. Mm-hmm. But Purdue, even in that game, everybody thought. Ah, this isn't very scary. No. Like, weren't they like 17 point dogs or something? Yeah, it was, it was, um, bad. And, and you know, Aiden O'Connell led a pretty good offense. Um, they, Jeff Brom had a very good team that year, but out of all the teams to play, I feel like I or Illinois would have been the scary one. Last year's Illinois team was pretty scary. Yeah, defensively, they could stick with anybody, they were the best defense in the country last year, and Illinois ended five and four. I'm not saying that based on any information that we have. That, hey, they had information about Illinois and were giving it to, like, the Purdue's of the world. But if you look at Illinois' team, they lost, like, three games down the stretch of the season. And one of them was to Purdue. Uh, uh, oh, uh, there's even more to this story. We'll see if we can get to it coming up next year on Herd at Sports Radio. We will be back.
we will be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. We will be back. and go do that so uh, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at least so I enjoy it it's a way for me to you know I used to be a pretty good football coach before I was a head coach and so I, it's a way for me to go do some football you're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio Edwards in to throw the football on first down it's picked off by the Horn Frogs here comes Josh Newton Newton inside the 20 down to the 10 touchdown that's actually Bud Clark who stepped in front of it and comes up with it. Frogs get the first score of the game. Michigan find it out about TCU's speed. McCarthy, four receivers, looks, fires, it's picked off. D. Winters grabs it at the 20, at the 15, to the 10. Touchdown. 27-yard pick six for D. Winters, the second of the game. <laughs> Welcome back. We're halfway through hour number one here on Herd at Sports Radio. I'm Ravi Lula. Andrew Rogers here with me. 
on AM 590 ESPN Omaha and ESPN Tri-Cities. We are brought to you by our friends at Dingman's Collision Center. Four great area, Omaha area locations throughout the metro. They are a family-owned and operated business in business for over 25 years here in Omaha. First place, best of Omaha, 18 years running. They can work on any make and model, and they've got the latest technology to do so. And because they are from here and they care about the community, they give back with every car repaired with their Dingman's Give Back program. Go check it out at dingmans.com. So continuing on with our uh, Michigan rabbit hole here. We heard that uh, call of the two pick sixes from TCU coming into the coming into the segment here. And so there's another wrinkle that I failed to mention in segment one. I, there's a lot that we haven't mentioned. There's so many wrinkles. Yeah, there's just so many things. Uh, so another thing that got revealed yesterday, or at least I found out yesterday, was the way this whole thing started, right? So you had the the NCAA investigation sort of broke the whole thing a week ago, I guess. It feels like it's been Mm -hmm. ages, right? Uh, But there was a notice that the NCAA was investigating this this low-level staffer. Well, so it comes to light that the NCAA was actually tipped off by a law firm that had been looking into Michigan. And that raises more questions than it answers. Raises the brow. Number one. Why was the law firm looking into Michigan? Number two, who's paying the law firm to look into Michigan? Because I don't know if you know much about law firms. They don't do a whole lot for free. They don't do pro bonos. <laughs> they do sometimes, but not for <laughs> stuff like this. Usually it's for well, like this a, is such a long term investigation. Yeah. This is not pro bono. No, usually it's like a single mom custody battle type mm-hmm. situation where they're trying to help somebody out here. Like it's a one week deal and then they go back to their billable hours, right? This is a definite like billable hour situation here for so who's paying for this? Who contacted the law firm? What were the what was the law firm firm looking for in the first place? And there's a couple different theories here from my my perspective, okay? And there's two things that came to mind when I heard about the law firm because they allegedly had been like looking into Michigan's computer records and things like that. I don't know if they were getting those legitimately or illegitimately. I don't know. I don't care. Um, But that reminded me of a co-offensive coordinator that was recently fired from Michigan for hacking Mm -hmm. into Michigan accounts like an idiot from a Michigan computer. (laughs) Like, I mean, come on. It, it, these people that Jim Wait, Harbaugh are you saying there's an FBI investigation that's still ongoing. Well, yes, <laughs> I am. So what I'm saying here is it doesn't look like Jim Harbaugh surrounds himself with the best and brightest necessarily in terms of covering their tracks. Like if you're going to be a criminal, don't be a moron. Yeah, but sometimes, though, if you really think about it, the mastermind behind the whole op, if it is Jim Harbaugh, um, tends to be the smartest guy in the room. And, and you do surround yourself with a bunch of dummies. Yeah. Because then you're always the smartest guy in the room. Well, not not just that, but no one ever thinks it's you because these guys are so dumb to get caught on their own. Yeah. It's like the Keystone cops right. over here it, like, just it, falling all over it, It's kind of like the guy that never gets caught, right? Yeah. So it's I, I'm planning this whole thing. I'm not doing anything other than my job. And my yeah. job is to just coach football. Mm-hmm. But you guys are going to do all of this. You're going to get paid very well to do all of this. But, hey, you run the risk of getting caught, Mm -hmm. but you're cool with it because, hey, you've always wanted to coach at Michigan. Hey, you grew up always wanting to coach at Michigan, and here's your opportunity to do it. And if you don't get caught, you can stay. Yeah. Yeah, so the – it's – there's – and you mentioned there's an ongoing FBI investigation of the former offensive coordinator for computer hacking. It sounds like – and I don't know this for sure. It sounds like the law firm maybe was doing some of that as well. They certainly were getting information about Michigan that – Michigan probably didn't want them to have. Um, But it begs the question, okay, so who has the motivation to hire a law firm to do this? Number one, somebody that hates Michigan, right? That's easy. Notre Dame, Ohio State, somebody like that who's like, hey, I know, you know, obviously TCU was told by everybody under the sun that Michigan was doing this. Mm -hmm. So somebody with an ax to grind against Ohio State says, hey, Let's look into let's look into Michigan, right? Or somebody with an axe grinding against Michigan says, "Hey, let's let's look into Michigan." Most likely Ohio State, right? Or 
a disgruntled Michigan employee, such as your former offensive coordinator, whose name escapes me at the moment, that was fired for hacking into computers. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. Or we can go real galaxy brain here. And, you know, if you're if you're talking about Jim Harbaugh being the smartest guy in the room (laughs) and setting things up. Maybe he thought, you know, hey, maybe the walls are closing in a little bit. Maybe he tries to deflect the attention to, hey, look at what this guy's doing. You know, look, he's like, I'm getting a little bit of trouble here for recruiting violations. Hey, let's go look at what this guy's Mm -hmm. doing. Why don't we go look at what's going on over here? Yeah, I don't think you really want that because you're still attacking your program. You wouldn't think so, but who knows? My question, though, is this. Is this a different law firm than the one that was, like, looking into uh, the 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 computers illegal, like the recruiting violations, the computers illegally, is this a different law firm than that? Or did it start there with this law firm and now it's ended with Connor Stallions because they just found this along the way? Yeah, and that I don't know. That's that's entirely my question. That's probably the most plausible. Probably. Because they're already looking into it. But if you're me, and and over the last two days, you've seen that this guy created a manifesto, a 600-page manifesto of how he wanted to take over the Michigan program, and you found out that – he had this this well thought out plan from the very beginning to go to a, a military school because every coach that ends up at Michigan is a military uh, has a military vet, background, right? Yeah. Um, then what I thought <laughs> the first thing that came to mind was, hey, what if Connor Stallions hired this law firm <laughs> himself? <laughs> and Stallion said, hey, we're gonna like try to just get like a little piece of this information. And then maybe it blows up in somebody else's face. And it's just another part of my master plan to be the head coach at Michigan someday. Yeah, I mean, that wouldn't shock me because guys with manifestos tend to not think all the way through the consequences of their actions. And now all of a sudden he's like, wait, wait, this is is too much, too much spotlight on me. Yeah, we got to deflect again. Yeah, he's like, no, no, no. You're supposed to figure out some stuff about other people. Um, That wouldn't shock me. Uh, it, it, it is kind of funny that this guy has a 600 page manifesto and none of it was about how not to get caught mm-hmm. or how to keep your Venmo. Well, private. Hey, I, I don't know. Maybe it, maybe this is part of the plan. We are only on like chapter 30 <laughs> and, and we're, we're only 400 pages in. Can somebody leak the manifesto, please? <laughs> like I need to know. I want to know what happens in the last 200. I need to know what's happening in this manifesto. Okay. Because it's either going to be. The most unhinged thing I've ever read, mm-hmm. which seems the most likely, or it's going to be some sort of evil genius, and I'm still interested, okay? But somebody needs to leak the manifesto. We've leaked everything else. I need somebody to get me that manifesto ASAP, all right? Like, this has to be coming out sooner or later. There's an, there's an investigation involved. Right. Like, NCAA, you're mas- basically useless. Like, just get me the manifesto. That's all I want. And then somebody read it and summarize it to me because I don't want to read This is going to be a... An episode of I almost got away with it someday, <laughs> uh, and it's going to be like one of like the greatest episodes of that show of all time. But you know, kind of what I think about here is I want to go back to that TCU game for a moment with the dummy signals, and I, I almost wonder if okay, yes, TCU heard like, hey, Michigan steals your signs. No one really knew how they stole the signs, but they knew that they were stealing signs, right? Um, until one school knew and then another school knew and then it, then the NCAA mm-hmm. knew and now everybody knows. But TCU proved that, hey, if you throw up dummy, if you do fake things and, and you throw up dummy calls, you're going to end up being victorious against this team. Mm-hmm. So they were kind of like, it's almost like the, the bully got beat mm-hmm. in that moment. Like when you're watching a movie and the bully gets beat, he gets beaten by the nerd that always like took punches throughout the whole movie. Mm-hmm. It's it, the good guy wins right at the end. So you see that, but then you probably saw other teams that are like, okay, we saw what TCU did. They did win, but I'm still sick and tired of oh, Michigan yeah. doing this. So we got to just shut this down as much as it's so-called legal. Cause it is legal to steal signs. Yeah. Like that's hundred percent legal in all sports. Not you legal. just can't videotape a sideline during the game and you're not allowed to in person in person, advance, in yeah. person scout and that's essentially what videotaping the sideline is doing well yeah so those are two separate rules though because even if you're just at the game that's still a violation mm-hmm. and then recording it is an additional one as well uh crazy stuff i don't i'm sure there's going to be more uh for now uh there is some stuff from the rural press conference yesterday that i wanted to talk about we'll get to that next you're on her sports radio we will be back
We will be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. Listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. You know, I, I like to uh, have those connections with those guys. Um, you know, there's been some years where I do one day defense, one day offense. You know, I just think it helps me really identify uh, young players. And I, you know, I'll sit there and be like, why is Kane over here? Get him up with the defense. Why is James over here? You know, why is Sua? Why is Vincent? You know, um, if left to their own devices, offensive coaches will make the guys just run cards and stand here and get blocked and they won't become good players. So I go over there and say, don't listen to them. <laughs> go do this and go do that. So uh, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, at least. So I enjoy it. It's a way for me to, you know, I used to be a pretty good football coach before I was a head coach. And so I, it's a way for me to go do some football. Welcome back. As we wrap up our number one here on Herd at sports radio, I'm Ravi Lula, Andrew Rogers here with me as well. Maybe we did spend the entire break trying to figure out who would play Jim Harbaugh in a movie. Maybe we I didn't. got it. You, you, uh, I'm still looking. I've it's, got it. You gave a good submission for sure. Like th this is, we're, we're leaning above 50% here. Okay. In, in terms of possibility. Let's hear it. Jim Harbaugh's actor or the guy playing Jim Harbaugh in this film. Yeah. Rob Deerdeck. So he does have a look. He does kind of have a look. Think about it. Think about it for a sec. Yeah. Rob Deerdeck, obviously younger than Jim Harbaugh. Yep. But even with a hat on, 
even though he smiles a lot. He smiles too much. That's that's my biggest. But hey, he can be serious in the movie. Like I'm that's listening. fine. I'm, okay. But if you look at facial features, yeah, of both of the guys, you will find a whole lot of connection. Here's my problem. I don't know if Rob Dyrdek can act. We've seen him on Ridiculousness, He's right? kind of a, like, reality <laughs> host person. I don't know if he can act. That's my issue. There's a lot of people that can't act what about that play in films. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. I kind of like Paul Rudd. He's too funny for me, though. That'd be a great choice. I think he could be serious. He's played serious before. <laughs> I don't know. The, I think Venti is 20. <laughs> you know what I think works about Paul Rudd is, like, Jim Harbaugh is kind of unintentionally funny. Like, he doesn't mean to be funny, but a lot of the stuff he says is so ridiculous that you're like, what? What's happening here? Mm -hmm. Like the, we didn't have protein shakes when I call a kid. We just call it milk or steak yeah, or whatever. He could be sarcastic. Like, that's a good one. I think Paul Rudd could work. I was, I guess I was looking on off of like straight um, physical appearance. Appearance. Yeah. Appearance. Like Paul Rudd is close enough physically, but Deerdick looks more like Jim Harbaugh for sure. But I feel like Paul Rudd could pull off the like unintentionally funny shit. Matt thinks Dennis Quaid and Travis tells me not to quit my uh my job to be a <laughs> casting agent. Right, um guys. I mean Dennis Quaid already played who did he play in that Rams movie? Uh Dick Vermeil. He did. He played Dick that Vermeil. he did. Um ooh, that was the Kurt Warner movie. Yeah. American underdog yep, is yep, what you're yep. referring to. I said Rams, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the Rams. I mean, yeah, but it's it's the about Kurt it's about yeah, Kurt Warner. Yeah. It's not about the Rams. Well, <laughs> I mean, he did play for the Rams. Yeah, but it was more about <laughs> hey, Kurt Warner's at a grocery store right now. I'm just, and then he went to go play arena football, and here he is. <laughs> I'm just going through Marvel actors. Apparently, uh, Mark Ruffalo <laughs> could maybe do. Yeah, it. let's get off the Avengers, <laughs> will you please? Never. I love the Avengers. Uh, okay. If you were doing like a satire. Yeah, he's over here like Samuel L. Jackson. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's do Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably who Jim Harbour would pick to play himself in the movie. Right. <laughs> uh, Scarlett Johansson is Jim Harbaugh. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds right. Um, so there was a couple things from Coach Rule's presser yesterday that I actually thought were interesting. First of all, I did think it was kind of funny. Oh, John says Rob Lowe. John's been on one the last few days. Rob like, Lowe's pretty he's, good. He's tweeted at us one time per show, and it, it, they have all been money. Absolute yeah. cash. Yeah. Like from Damian Lillard downtown in his debut yeah. with Milwaukee. Just like all a cool three 39, shots, no big deal. Nothing but net. He's yeah. been money. Rob Lowe's a good one. That's a real good That's, one. It's Rob Deerdeck. <laughs> Rob Deerdeck will play the body Rob double. Lowe's great. But Rob Deerdeck. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Deere, that could be the stunt double for, <laughs> for him. Um, no, there are a couple things that Coach Rule said in his presser yesterday. That First of all, I thought it was funny that he was like, hey, I was a pretty good football coach before I became a football coach. <laughs> that, was, that was a little amusing. Hey, Rob Lowe likes football, too. Let's be real. I also, like, I understand what he's saying, mm -hmm. though, because you actually, a lot of times you don't actually get to coach that much as a head coach because mm -hmm. you're doing all the other things, right? That's I, why he says he stresses out about everything throughout a game. and. Um, that was in the press conference on why he wasn't going to go to the volleyball match last Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a little funny because you would think as like a head football coach, like it's mostly administrative. Like you're you're a manager. You're you know people use the term CEO all the time, but I honestly think that's especially in a place like Nebraska. Like there's smaller schools where you can be a head football coach and still be like nitty gritty in it. Mm -hmm. Um. But honestly, I think that's one of the reasons Scott Frost didn't do well here, among other reasons. But I think he wanted to coach football, and that's not really what the head coach job is here. Like, the head coaching job is here is a management and public relations mm -hmm. position um, more than Yeah, because at UCF, it was more of a coaching role. Yeah, at some of the smaller um, schools. Where Oregon, you, he was a coordinator. Yeah. At some of the smaller schools where you don't have to do all the other stuff around, what like all the all the public relations, all the management, because you don't just have your, your football staff, right? You've got an enormous like support staff and all like the number of people that directly support Nebraska football is enormous. Mm -hmm. And Matt rules in charge of all of them. Right. So there's some people that that's just not the skill set that they bring to the table. It's one of those things where, you know, I, I don't know, <laughs> like I'm sure a lot of people listening have, have been in situations where they're like in a sales role or something like that. And then they make, the office is a great example of this, right? Steve Steve Carell 
Michael Scott was a good salesman. I thought you meant our office here. I'm like, Steve Carell, who plays him? I've never been to our Sasha? office. <laughs> Steve Carell is Jim Harbaugh. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's Get Smart all over again. <laughs> Actually, you know who Loki like, kind of has a Jim Harbaugh vibe? Is Dwight. Like, he's kind of a weirdo. <laughs> Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. <laughs> like I feel like if millions of Americans are affected by it every year. If Jim Harbaugh didn't become a professional football player and then high-level football coach, I feel like he's in an he office been somewhere office. acting like Dwight. <laughs> where he's like, fired preparedness, let's go. <laughs> so anyway. Anyway. <laughs> the office, Matt Rule. Yeah. Steve Carell. So like Steve Carell in, in the office, Michael Scott is a really good salesperson. Good enough to get elevated to manager, but that's totally not the skill set that he has, at least especially early in this in the series. Right. He's not a good manager because he was a good salesman. Like those skill sets are not related. A lot of times these position coaches, coordinators, stuff like that, they have to either learn a new skill set to become a good head coach or use a skill set that's totally different from the skill set that got them to where they are. It's a very strange dynamic. And I appreciate Coach Rule kind of just actually acknowledging that because that's not something a lot of people talk about. Um, the other thing that I really liked that he said yesterday was he was talking about there's only 29 days left in the season, mm -hmm. which first of all made me sad. Only 29 days left in, in Nebraska football season makes me sad. I didn't Obviously, I want to win. Okay, I well, didn't. Thank you. I didn't either. And he said it. I was like, why? You, why you gotta do that? Why you gotta do us like that, mm -hmm. Coach Rule? Um, but he he said. He said, hey, we can do anything for 29 days, which I took to mean, and you could tell me if, you, if you're there, if you heard it this way or not, but I took that to mean like, hey, we can execute at a high level for 29 days. We can be a better offense than we have been for 29 days. We can figure out we don't have any running backs. We don't have any wide receivers. We're out of all of our offensive line. We can figure anything out for 29 days. And I just really appreciated his kind of ability to compartmentalize and say, hey, it feels really big when you say, hey, these guys are missing for the rest of the season. It doesn't feel as big when you're saying, hey, we just got to do without them for 29 days. And I thought that perspective on it was really good. Yeah, you know, um, I, I can agree with that. Uh, going back to your CEO point real fast, it, 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 I've always kind of been on the Matt Rule CEO train yeah, from the very beginning yeah. just because of the way that he's operated. And, and, and frankly, I, I agree with your point about Scott Frost, too, in the sense of when Nebraska was looking for their next head coach, they needed somebody that was going to act more like a CEO, yeah. a hands-on CEO, yeah. but just a CEO. Because with Matt Rold's background, you don't put him in the situation you do at Baylor if he can't handle it from a CEO type of view. Yeah. 100%. He, he's just not in that role. Because he wasn't there just to fix the football, right? He was there to fix everything that was going on with you don't put him in Carolina. Mm -hmm. You don't give him that opportunity in Carolina. If you don't think that this guy can act mm -hmm. as a CEO for his team, a, a bad Carolina team, mm -hmm. and he steps in and he tries to make it work. And it just didn't happen because there were other, um, there were other um, faults on him yeah. that caused him to, to fail in, in Carolina. And the biggest one was he cared too much about his players. He didn't want to cut his players. Yeah. And that's why he fits so much more in college football mm -hmm. than he does in the NFL. But at Nebraska, it just made a whole lot of sense because you're picking up a broken program. You're picking up a program that hadn't won games for a handful of years. Like they, they won enough, but they didn't win to put them in bowl contention. It's and, not good and, enough. That's, and that's exactly it's not good enough. It's it's where you want to be mm -hmm. like that's That's where they're going. Mm -hmm. And to have them in that spot right now, like projected to get there in year one, mm -hmm. only a really solid CEO can do Absolutely. only a really solid CEO can flip the script and say, hey, we're not going to do this anymore. We're going to do it this way. Mm -hmm. And so then going to your point with 29 days left. Yeah, it's all about work ethic. It's yeah. all about be, going from a good team to a great team. I don't know if you saw the most recent GBR rewind but it was all about discipline yeah and um it, it was about separating the fact of hey you're not a great team mm -hmm. you can be there but you're not you're a good team you're not a great team and sometimes harsh criticism is what people need yeah because if you beat around the bush 
nobody's going to get better. No. Nobody's going to think better. No. In any situation, you just have to, like, get to the point. And that's Coach Rule. He gets to the point. Yeah. And that's why he's taken so seriously. Because if you're too nice, the nice guy gets pushed around. Mm-hmm. If you're too mean, nobody's going to like you. If you find some of that in-between ground where he cares for you, but he also expects a lot from you, then you're going to get the best possible result. And that's where Coach Rule is right now. Yeah, and it's a harder line to walk than I think people realize. Um, Coming up next, we're going to talk to our friend Michael Rose Ivy, get a little preview of Nebraska and Purdue here on Herd Sports Radio. We will be back. We will be back. We'll be back. We'll be back.
You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. That offense is scary. Um, the return game, the returners are scary. Um, you know, they have three back now, so he's obviously going to be in the mix. So they have dynamic players in those areas. And on defense, you know, Coach Walters, I mean, they're going to get off the bus and they're going to play man and they're going to pressure us and they're going to blitz us. And, you know, um, we're going to have to we're gonna have to make some plays and pick those things up with a new, you know, a new group on the offensive line. So um, it's an even matchup. This is a great game. This should be a great game. It should be a great game right down the wire. Um, and we'll, we'll just try to play our best to get to the fourth quarter, try to make one more play than the opponent and hope that we win the game. Welcome back. Hour number two here on Herd at Sports Radio. I'm Robbie Lula. Andrew Rogers here with me as well. We are brought to you by Big Brothers, Big Sisters. They are on a mission to support one-to-one mentoring relationships that ignite the power and promise of youth. Go to MentorOmaha.org to sign up to become a big, or you can also donate money, donate tickets to events so that already existing matches have some activities to participate in. Um, you can also invite Big Brothers, Big Sisters to your business. You can sponsor events. You can do all sorts of things uh, by going to MentorOmaha.org. We talked to our guy, Eric Bird, earlier in the week, and uh, he gave us some really good information about just the impact that mentoring has had on not just him, but on his little as well. And uh, we really appreciate Big Brothers, Big Sisters for supporting us uh shane do we've got do we have mri okay uh joining us now is our guy former husker current high school coach michael rose ivy michael how you doing this morning good morning man my apologies man i'm wrangling up for ISS. no you're all good mri um you're you're all good uh as we uh let's focus back on the northwestern game uh before we look ahead to purdue uh, when Coach Rule says things like, hey, earlier in this season, we wouldn't have won this game, what does that mean to you when you hear that? I think because it wasn't pretty, you know, as far as the fish, I think that maybe, uh, you know, a lot of the Nebraska things, I saw the you know, uh, one, one guy was saying, you know, this, could, you know, it's a 30-point game, and, you know, they go out and, and they, they, they have a win that, that looks really, really impressive. It's what seemed to be a you know, a uh, uh, down and, and kind of a real in Northwestern program, obviously with the stuff they have to do with this offseason and just trying to get to this season. Um, but I think it's just more so the adversity. Um, obviously, the injuries that are piling up is, is, is almost, um, you know, re- not ridiculous, but something to question at this point, you know, uh, how many guys do you have to be able to say next man up? So I think for uh, Coach Rule, just seeing those guys, those young guys, uh, the receivers, O-line, and some other positions have to step up. You know, I think that's something that you know, I think he's, he's proud of to see that you know that development, the uh, the structure that they're working with that currently is it is helping get guys ready to play if they need to be. Michael, it wasn't the easiest to watch, but who cares when the outcome is a W against Northwestern in a game full of hard to watch plays? What were you impressed with? What moments had you saying Nebraska did this well and that's why they won? I mean, obviously, the, the, the continuation of the, the run fits and stopping the run is, is whoever you go against, you know, being able to stop the run and being a physical upfront defense um, will always be impressive to me. You know, I think that even despite the situations, obviously, um, the, the, the interceptions and, um, you know, other things, uh, the, the field position battle that, that kind of was a struggle. Um, you know, I think as far as the defense and how they're stepping up and just continuing to show themselves, um, you know, shows themselves worthy of being black shirts. I think that's been the most impressive thing. You know, obviously, you know, the offense is, is still struggling trying to find, you know, what is the identity. So, um, you know, definitely the defense. Hey, Michael, uh, as we – before we move on to the Purdue uh, game, I did want to ask you, you know, obviously the, the Michigan sign-stealing thing has been in the news a ton. As somebody who's kind of been in that position in terms of – on the field, how much of a difference would it make if you knew either the signals that the offense was was calling in, or if the offense knew the signals that you were calling in on defense? How how much of a difference does that actually make? I don't. I think for a player, I don't necessarily think that's the information they would share with the players because that's too much of a process. You know okay. I mean? um, 
I, I maybe may a guy who's like he's a football head. He's always in the football. He's hey man, here's a, you know here's some tips from season or whatever. Um, but I think more so for the coordinators, and you know you obviously be to see uh, the guy being next to the coordinators and kind of saying stuff. I think for the coordinators, understanding hey if I got a check with my team and I know what they're checking for, I I should know going into the game what my next call is instead of it being more of a um, re not I want to say reactive but in the moment type of thing where you're really analyzing the situation in front of you. This is more sort of premeditated. Hey, they're going to power on third down than our call is. We're going to flip two off the edge and send everybody down and smack the running back. You know, so I think you have a little bit easier game planning process. But yeah, it's it's interesting. I tweeted out last night that it's definitely going to be a ESPN 30 for 30 for this one. So this is it's becoming increasingly more entertaining as we go, especially with TCU <laughs> finding out that they knew it and they were doing dummy signals and you see how you know how that game went. So it's very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, so uh, we've actually spent a lot of the morning trying to cast the inevitable movie that is going to be made out of this thing. <laughs> so we're kind of right on the same page there with you, Michael. But so you're saying from more of a less than like an in the moment, the players are kind of adjusting to what signals they know and more of the coordinators and their game plan. So if if this was a situation where you knew what the offense was checking to or things like that, would you be able to, um, as a coach or coordinator, would you be able to sh like show that you were trying to do one thing, but that's actually, again, kind of a dummy call and you were actually in something else to get them to do what you wanted them to do? For sure. I, and that's not the end all be all. But you'll look, I mean, I think you'll look at some situations where, hey, like when they're in maybe a certain formation and they do check with me, what is, what is their tendency to go to, you know, things like that. And you kind of use, that information, along with obviously knowing the signals, you have to put put your players in the, in the best situation possible. Um, and it, it takes a little bit more stress off. Because like I said, it's, it, it's knowing, you know, their next chess move, right, um, before they re before they even really know it, right? And like you said, you give them those guys, hey, we're going to we're kind of bait them and get them into the look we want to get them into so we know what the next call is going to be. Um, it, just, it just takes, a, you know, you make the offense more predictable, obviously, and um, like I said, put your guys in the best position to be successful. All right, Michael, here's the question, because I, I, this is what I'm going to end with with this Michigan scandal, because this, <laughs> I feel like uh, I need some outside opinions on, on who should cast Jim Harbaugh in this movie. Should it be Rob Deerdeck, Rob Lowe, Paul Rudd, or John Hamm? Uh... I'll go Rob Deerdick because I haven't heard Rob Deerdick's name in a while. <laughs> All right. <laughs> think of, think about this too, man. You can look up Rob Deerdick today back. and think, man, that guy looks a lot like Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you can definitely make it happen. You know, put him in some uh, some bands and, and, you know, give him a skateboard. And, <laughs> and I think he did a really good job. I think he would enjoy it. All right. Let's get back to, to actual football now <laughs> instead of the the, the storyline that, that we want to go down in that rabbit hole. Uh, talking about this matchup, Purdue, Coach Rule called this an even matchup yesterday. Do you see it as even? I do. I mean, again, um, just looking at where programs are in the context of where we're yeah, um, you know, they're, they're two and five and, you know, the record, you know, obviously will show it. But I think Coach Rule is a win for every edge, man. I, I think he's. He, he feels, I mean, like everyone's been tweeting out. Everyone's looking at the end of the schedule, you know, you know, we, we, we obviously there's, uh, you know, possibility, a high possibility to be in the bowl game uh, with how the schedule is playing out and, and if we continue to play. So I, I think he's trying to find every edge. You know, obviously, uh, Coach Walters, you know, he has some, 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 some personal blood in the Nebraska, you know, Colorado rivalry. And, um, as do uh, Coach Kevin Kane, who's here from Kansas City. He played at KU, also played against Nebraska. So, you know, I, I think for, for everyone, you know, especially with being new to their pro, relatively new to their pro games, uh, everyone's just trying to find, you know, an edge and get their kids to be able to play at a high level and, and go get a win, you know, in the tough big team. Um, so I think both teams are going to play with, a, with, with that edge and play with an aggression. And I think it's going to be a, it may be a little bit of a, a more of a, um, you know, a, I guess pushing each other and then a little bit. Maybe a little more personal. I think with the coaches involved and, and not, not even between them, but just with the team and what they're trying to do uh, with their programs, I think it's going to definitely be one of those type of games where you'll see, see a little bit of the edge. We're talking with Michael Rose Ivy, former Husker, uh, current high school coach. Uh, Michael, the weather around here is supposed to be a little dicey tomorrow. It's going to be cold. 
uh, might have some precipitation as well. Is that something when you look at, okay, you've got Graham Harrell as your offensive coordinator, you got Hudson Card and, and maybe an offense in Purdue that's trying to uh, get things going through the air a little bit more. How much do you think that might be an advantage for Nebraska to have the elements not be ideal for throwing the football around? Yeah, um, I think that's one of the things that's it's always tough with those type of offenses when you have to play in those weather games. Um, I mean, being able to throw the ball is a big part of success in a lot, in a lot of offenses nowadays. But, um, you know, having a run game that is at least able to um, extend drives in short yard situations um, and possibly get some big plays. You know, I think that's something that that's not really uh, obviously Graham Hurl played under Leach, so that's not something he was coached under or probably coaches or his philosophy. But um, you know, I think for them, the weather is going to be a, a, a big deal. Uh, but but these these are athletes that have played in, in many conditions, understanding that you know you know where they are in Indiana, the weather and type of things we get a big deal. I, I feel like that's not going to be as big of an issue, but um, I think it's going to be being able to see if they're going to want to run the football in the, in the weather and kind of playing at Nebraska a little bit, which, which may not be a good idea with how Nebraska has been playing in the run. So it may be a little bit more spread out of that for getting the ball out on the edge. So that'll be intriguing to see how Purdue kind of adjusts the, their scheme and their philosophy in, 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 in context of how Nebraska defense has been playing against the run. Michael, speaking of scheme, how much or how well do you think the Nebraska defense matches up with? potentially what we think Purdue wants to do, because I know Nebraska has been great against the run this year, but originally the three, three, five was kind of designed uh, to deal with some of these uh, spread offenses. How, how do you think they match up against Purdue? Sorry, I, said I lost you a little bit. Say that one more time. Yeah. Just, how do you think the, this defense matches up against the, what Purdue wants to do schematically? You know, I, I think the, the structure lends itself to being able to play against more open sets and spread sets. Um, I think the personnel, obviously Nebraska has up, up front, um, does assist them. And I think just the way they get to their run sets and do a lot of different things with their back end guys and, and how they fit them. Um, but I think as far as uh, DBs, I think they can, they can handle what, you know, what they do. I think they're going to do a lot of coverage rotation in the cover three and cover two. Um, you know, getting in cover one. And I think the big key is, again, I saw last week in Northwestern, how much pressure they got on the quarterback if Nebraska can um, get pressure on the quarterback and, and make Hudson Card um, have to, uh, you know, make, make decisions with, with people at his feet and, and, and guys in the face. Um, but I, I think as far as the structure that, that the defense is, um, you know, what was, was kind of created for, I think you can definitely handle the sets they're doing. Personnel-wise, I think, um, you know, like I said, there's a lot of switch-ups and coverages and, and matching up guys against, against their receivers. Michael, for Nebraska to be a great offensive team down the stretch of the season, you'd like to see who emerge at the skill position to give this team sustained success. You said who am I looking for? Yes. Who, who would you like to see emerge at a skill position, at any skill position, to give this team sustained success on offense? It's got to be at the quarterback spot. I mean, I'm not sure, you know, which guy is is, is going to be. I don't know if it's him, if him healthy. Is he, is he available? Yeah, he is. I, they uh, believe he's a full go now. But maybe maybe instead, because that, that could be an easy answer, take Heinrich Harburg and Jeff Sims out of the equation. What about somebody different? Somebody different? I would say Grant. I, thought, I mean, obviously he's had the, the issues with the, 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 you know, the fumbles and things like that. Um, but I think it's giving stability at the running back position. I mean, I was outside the quarterback spot or really help. Um, and, and it's, it's tough looking at that running back spot now and obviously seeing the old, old line injuries and expecting and wanting more, um, explosiveness out of the running game. Uh, but he's a guy, you know, like Coach Rule said, he's a, he's a, he's a guy that can play on Sundays. Like right? he's, he's got some things to clean up in the ball security area. Um, but I, I think he's, he's definitely a guy that still has that ability. I think he's still good. I mean, um, a, a guy I think could really burst out and, and, and have a, a good game uh, this week and keep an opportunity. Michael Rose, Ivy, former Husker. Michael, we appreciate your time. As always, we'll talk to you again next week. No problem. Appreciate you guys. Hey, thanks, man. That's our guy, Michael Rose, Ivy, previewing Purdue. We're going to switch gears here in just a minute and get to our guy, Marty Cordero from Union Omaha. They've got a huge matchup. 
uh, this weekend. I think that's on, an understatement. Yeah, it's uh, it's well, so they we're going with massive or massive, <laughs> massive semifinal matchup against Charlotte on Saturday. They uh, they won the league. They ended up top mm-hmm. of the table, as they say, and uh, now they got that home field advantage for the semifinal against Charlotte. And joining us now is our guy, Marty Cordero from Union Omaha. Marty, how are you this morning? Uh, good morning. Um, it's chilly getting us ready for tomorrow, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I keep telling everybody, if you want to go to the warmest place in the metro tomorrow, 4.30 is Warner Park. So we're, we're excited to host uh, Charlotte here. And, you know, um, the team team hasn't lost since July 22nd. So it's been quite an historic run, and we're really proud of what they've accomplished to this date. But, you know, uh, our second season, if you will, begins tomorrow at Warner Park. Yeah, you mentioned haven't lost in a very long time. 14-game unbeaten streak, 13 of those outright wins that shot you all the way to the top of the table for the regular season title in USL League One. I guess what did that mean to you and just being able to, you know, because uh, I believe two years ago you, you won the regular season as well. Last year you mentioned that run in the cup kind of took a little bit out of the wind out of your sails during the regular season. How much did it mean to you to get back to the top of the table this year? You know, it, was, it, it, it look, it means a lot. Uh, 21 was different. We were pretty much wire to wire. Uh, you know, we were we were predicted to win. We did regular season. We did <laughs> postseason. This year, there were a lot of unknowns. Mm-hmm. You know, you you you, you move away from uh, uh, the the system that we had when Coach Mims made the decision to step away from the club, and and everything he accomplished was was amazing and appreciated. And then we hired Dominic Casciato, and you know, we we hired someone that we. We, we, we gave Coach Dom uh, the, the, the mission of scoring more goals. Uh, mm-hmm. And even even to the point where we said we would rather lose four to three than win one to nothing, meaning we wanted a more exciting uh, brand of soccer. And the first third of the season was transition. You had mm-hmm. more than 50% of the players knew. You had a new system, new head coach. Obviously, it's another new year. Uh, so there are a lot of factors. And by the time June rolled around, you could see this team really start to pick up the system, uh, start to gel. And then by July really is when the winning started happening. And, and yes, you mentioned the Open Cup run last year, which was historic and, and made us the darlings of American soccer, if you will. Uh, but it did take a lot out of the club. And, and I do believe because we didn't have a deep run this year, it really allowed this club to focus on the task at hand, and that was finishing at the top of the table uh, this regular season. Marty, you talk about building an exciting brand of soccer. Uh, it's it's the playoff. It, it builds that itself, like it, it it has it's its own entity. But you're playing a Charlotte team that Union Omaha snagged a win against, has a loss against, and a draw. So now playing for the, the fourth time this season, and you'd have to expect this matchup to be a bruiser and go the furthest distance possible. Because anytime you play a team four times in one season, that's kind of what happens, right? You you figure each other out. What do you have planned at the stadium, though? Because you guys do such a great job of building a huge venue atmosphere in a smaller stadium. What do you have planned for this exciting semifinal matchup? You know, it, it, it's the playoffs. Uh, you know, we, we, we don't have uh, post-game fireworks. We don't have another Rashid Nugru bobblehead and some of the other things we've done. The focus is really on the sport. You know, that's, that's our, 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 our focus is, is the soccer and you're going to see the smoke. You're going to see the music. You're going to see the chanting. Parliament and uh, our other supporter groups will be there. So, you know, c- come. Uh, whether you come early or not, I'll let, you, I'll, I'll let the fans decide if they're going to tailgate or not with the, with the weather we're going to have. But come and c- come loud. And you know that it's two hours. So you can commit to that two hours because we're going to need every single person that has supported this club or every single person who's a soccer fan that maybe has not tried Union Omaha soccer yet, come out tomorrow. There are there are tickets remaining, and 4.30 is first kick. And, you know, we get that one under our belt, then we know what's, what's for us at the end of uh, the next week would be hosting the finals at Warner Park as well. Marty, uh, you mentioned, you know, the 
the atmosphere. I finally made it out to my first Union Omaha game. Ironically enough, when the last time they played Charlotte and it was a four to one win, but that thing was neck and neck for a long time. And then the the goals late kind of came as an avalanche to create that margin there. Um, I guess just how much fun has it been to watch, as you mentioned, this team kind of go through transition, kind of get their get their feet under them sort of in late July and then watch the wins pile up and and see not just the wins, but the wins come in a way that you sort of envisioned when you hired Dominic Cassiato to create a more exciting brand of football. And like I said, those those goals tend to come in bunches. They do. And and, and I would say this, uh, our general manager, Peter Marlette, uh, did an amazing job of, of, of putting a talented squad together. You know, a lot of the club core was already put together by the time we hired Coach Casciato in January. And then obviously Coach and Peter worked to, to fill out that roster uh, before camp started. But I, I, I'll offer a couple of things. One, you know, the support was always there for, for Coach Dom along, along the way. And I think someone who doesn't get enough credit is Rashid Duhu. You know, yes, uh, the goals allowed this year are up, but he was playing unbelievable soccer at the beginning of the year. And while none of us were happy with the amount of draws that, that we had, if you look at that, that's what kept us in it up until the time that we figured out the system offensively. And Nuhu has had another amazing year, and he's the all-time League One record holder, uh, you know, uh, you know for, for clean sheets. So I think Rashid doesn't get enough credit because all we've talked about July is the offense. Mm -hmm. But Rashid's also had another great year. Uh, the, the other piece is this team's really unselfish. You know, we've had a few injuries. Noe was out for a while, and, you know, we've had some others. And then we obviously, unfortunately, lost Connor Doyle for the year. Uh, toward the end of the year, our, our, one of our team captains, uh, and has been with us for three seasons. It's the unselfish nature of the team. Uh, you know, we don't talk a lot about individuals and, and, you know, Coach Dom has really, really uh, been able to get everyone to buy into the team uh, approach. And that's what when we announced back on May 1st of 19 that we were bringing the franchise in. We wanted this uh, to be something for the community. We wanted the team to truly be a team and not just individuals. And then obviously since then we have uh, we've coined the phrase one means all, which is our club motto. And, and, and that is true, not only in the community, this, this being a club for all different types of, of fans and, 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 and community goers, but also one means all in the team sense on the field. And, you know, we, we, we look to see that continue tomorrow at 430 at Warner Park. All right, Marty, before we let you go, we got about 30 seconds here. Let the people know how can they get tickets? How can they uh, be a part of what's going on tomorrow? UnionOmaha.com is your easiest way. UnionOmaha.com. And if you haven't been and you have questions, 402-738-5100. That number again, 402-738-5100. And look, gates open uh, tomorrow at 3.30. Come on out. Come loud. If you don't have any union gear, we've got a lot of good cold weather gear. So we're ready for you. We'll see you tomorrow at Warner Park. Appreciate you guys supporting local sports. Of course, that's Marty Cordero, president of Union Omaha. They play in the semifinals of the USL League One playoffs tomorrow afternoon at 4.30. Marty, we appreciate you as always, buddy. All right, take care, guys. Have a tremendous weekend. You too, man. Thanks. All right, coming up next, we've got more for that Sports Radio coming up on AM590 at ESPN Omaha and ESPN Tri-Cities. We will be back. <laughs> We will be back.
we will be back. We'll be back. At Sports Radio. Pitch to Tucker. On the ground to second. Should do it. Simeon throws to first. And the Texas can't. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. We are halfway through the show here on a Friday. Andrew Rogers with me. I'm Robbie Lula. We are live on AM590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities, and we are brought to you by rock rook camera rock rook camera is not just trying to sell you a camera they're trying to make you the best photographer you can be whatever that means for your life if you're trying to be a professional photographer already are a professional photographer or you're a guy like me you just want to take quality pictures uh to share your memories with your friends and family rock brook camera has you covered they have The latest technology you can try out, such as mirrorless cameras, you can trade in your old gear to upgrade, or they have an extensive rental department to help you figure out what you need. If you just need something short term, or if you're going to try some things out, it is a great way to try before you buy. And once you do buy, they've got unlimited support after the sale, such as monthly classes to help you learn and get acquainted with your new gear make sure you check out rockbrook camera in omaha 168th and west center or lincoln 70th and pioneer or anytime and anywhere at rockbrookcamera.com all right so i 
Uh, I'm in the practice of sending random things to my co-host here uh, during all hours of the day and night, whenever I find something interesting. Lately, it's been a lot of TikToks about Michigan uh, sure has. <laughs> theories and, and information that uh, is unveiled. But I also sent you something yesterday about from The Ringer, and I kind I enjoy these stupid little prompts, and it was basically, okay. If you have to choose, you're 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 Nebraska, right? All your your top four wide receivers are gone, okay? And right. you you've got somebody in the in the in the transfer portal that's eligible immediately. You're okay. ready to go. Okay. The two guys in the portal are prime Jerry Rice, mm-hmm. pretty good, mm-hmm. or Spider Man, <laughs> Peter Parker. Who are you taking? And he can't use the webbing to catch the ball. He can't use the webbing. I think that's an important distinction here. Cannot use the webbing. So, like, if it's over his head, he can. Right. Like, well, he can, obviously, you take you take Jerry Rice. Then you take away Superman's no, power. No, hold on. No, just the webbing because he's still incredibly fast. Spider Man is. Is he incredibly fast though, or is he just incredibly fast because he can like catapult himself yeah. through? I don't know. He Using is very strong though because he can hold fast. on. I, I don't know. But it's like here's the thing about Spider-Man. also what kind of a route runner is Spider Man? That's here's what the I thing need about Spider Man. Like, right. Spider Man is yes, he take like is it the real Peter Parker or is it like Tom Holland? Um. Okay. So tell me the difference here. Well, so like the real Peter Parker was bitten by a spider. Yes. Yeah. Like that. That's uh. I can't remember the actor's name. Um, Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire. Yeah, the, thank the you. Original. Uh, but Tom Holland's just in a suit created by Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man. Yeah. So he was also, I believe, bitten by a spider because he's like he's. I think. I don't think he was ever bitten by a spider. So they didn't show the origin, but I think he. I don't know. I just. Assumed. I think it's. I think he's just in a Spidey suit created by okay. Iron Man. So if it's just because he does, his webbing comes out of his suit. So like, does uh, Andrew Garfield though, and he was bit by a spider. Only to Obi to only Toby McGuire actually produces his own webbing. Well, so the, which helps my case even more. Like, sure, so you're talking about so let's say it's Tom Holland and let's say it's uh, Toby McGuire. It's, okay. it's Toby, McGuire. It, it's the guy that was bitten by a spider. Yes, so he does have some superpowers, but he's not allowed to use webbing in the football game. I think I'm still going with Jerry Rice because you're going prime Jerry Rice here. Even if you're like quick like a spider, and he is short, like Toby right? McGuire, short, you but, be... but even if you're quick like a spider, yeah, that doesn't help you. <laughs> all too much when it comes to like the mental part of the game like you have to like know mm, okay. the game to be good at football now, i don't you know you but you can't just have like the skill sets and just be automatically fantastic at football peter parker is incredibly smart you have you, you, he's smart but is he football smart well I, you think he'd be able to pick it up that's <laughs> yeah, all i'm I mean, saying maybe. like he can do backflips <laughs> like tyree kill we saw that in the opening fight scene <laughs> yep. like or in the school where he very athletic through the lunch athletic. tray Great at, at Flash, I believe. Yeah, at Flash, at Flash, he's he's got incredible reflexes. We saw him catch the stuff on the tray. Okay, so we can assume he's got good hands there. I think you're dismissing. I think you're dismissing Peter Parker too quickly. Nobody okay. work. Nobody works harder than Peter Parker. I mean, that guy. He goes to school. Mm-hmm. He's up all night fighting bad guys. He he can get knocked down. He gets right back up. It doesn't hurt him. So here's he's, my. He's just a. He's just a. He's a machine. Honestly, but are you talking about? Spider Spider Man gets hurt, like he every does, time. He every time he battles, bit. he gets beat up. He so beat it's up not like bit. he just doesn't get hurt. So here like he gets sore. He may not. He may not be as susceptible to injury as Jerry Rice sure. if he was hit by a truck. Although, although Jerry Rice only injured one time in his entire career. I mean, because there are times where Parker gets did come, thrown, like he gets mm-hmm. cars thrown at him. Mm-hmm. But then again, he uses his Spidey senses. Yeah, he does have the Spidey sense. To maneuver. Which Spidey sense could be very useful while maneuvering through a defense. It sure could. Now, now, Spider-Man does bring a lot of baggage, though. I mean, if if you're if he's going to be out at all, all time of the night doing different things like fighting bad guys and stuff like that, I mean, I don't know if you really want to have a guy on your team doing that. I, I, I all mean, I'm and, saying. And he's got like three or four different girlfriends. I mean, he's got a lot. <laughs> hey, don't, don't, tell, don't tell us maybe Jerry Rice may have had something, he's, something going he's on. He's got a lot weekend. going on. Peter Peter Parker, he's trying to. He's in school. He's he's probably trying to get. Well, I mean, we're, we're talking about for Nebraska, so mm-hmm. being in school is a yep. positive. We and we're talking to... about Prime Jerry. Yes. So here's a couple things that I'd be worried about with uh, with good old Peter Parker. Okay. Okay. So, so TK says he was Tom Holland was bitten by a spider. I still don't think that's true. I think he was. It just wasn't shown. 
Like they, the suit he wore though was created it by, was, by by Tony Stark. By Tony Stark, and he was like, it was like that was the that super was suit. The, that was the super suit, but he had his own suit. I that think he, he still had made. I think he still had. Yeah, because he, he yeah, I remember because before before Tony Stark shows up, he's running around in pajamas basically and fighting yeah. crime. Was Tom Holland bitten by a spider? <laughs> <laughs> so here's my concerns with Spidey as a uh, as a teammate and as a football player. Okay, nobody's arguing the physical skills. The problem is, this guy had a ta- hard time making it to his regular classes. Okay, he was, despite being borderline genius, still was almost failing out of school because he was always off fighting crime and doing other things. Right? You're telling me this guy's not going to miss any offensive meetings? You're telling me this guy's going to be there for practice all the time? I'm not buying it. <laughs> He's got to save the world, Jerry. That's what I'm saying. What if you're in the middle of a two minute drive? And his spidey sense goes off that somebody's get, that some grandma's getting robbed down the street. He's leaving. <laughs> Jerry Rice ain't leaving for that. He's finishing that two minute drive. Yeah, but you could also think about like the defensive back taking the football away from your team. That's stealing too. That's true. I don't so, know that so he, maybe he's weighing his options. I don't know that he cares as much about that as he does about Granny getting robbed at the corner store. Um, so I, I mean, honestly, I think it's a commitment to football issue here. I'm not sure Peter Parker was going to give you his all. Like he's, you know, that, you know, coach rules always talked about, Hey, we need the guys that want to be here a hundred percent. How much does Peter Parker want to be there? How much does Peter Parker want to be a football player? That's what we need to know. Well, well Jerry Rice the, has all the skill sets to be a good wide receiver. Nobody knows what Spider-Man brings. That's true. I'm taking the proving guy. He's out of a the huge portal. wild card. What's would, that Shane? Would Peter Parker be playing football because he can play? Whereas in Jerry Rice is playing because he wants to play. How many times have you seen Spider-Man play football? No. How many times have you seen Jerry Rice play football? Several. That's, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> End of story. And you could make an argument, you know, Jerry Rice, he broke his leg, came back the same year. Maybe Jerry Rice has some superhuman healing abilities too. We don't know. We don't know. I don't think anybody ever tested his blood. Not in the MCU has there been footage of Tom Holland being bit, but they say he was. That yeah, was there's Travis. no footage. I do question you, Thomas. <laughs> Though I don't see Peter Parker playing anywhere outside of the East Coast. I mean, he's he's an East Coast. He is guy. a New York guy. He's, he's a New York guy. I mean, he'd be at Rutgers. You he'd know, be somewhere he he'd would be at Rutgers. Maybe he would have played for Matt Rule. <laughs> is Rule that at- because he's red and white? <laughs> because Nebraska's red and white too. Maybe <laughs> he would have played for Matt Rule at Temple. We don't know. They used to say Matt Rule was an East Coast guy, and then he went to Baylor and he came to Nebraska. I think he's. I think he's. Okay. I don't see Peter Parker moving off the East Coast. You don't see him coming to Lincoln? No. I don't know. I'm still on. Was Tom Holland ever bitten by a spider? I believe he was. I believe it is. I believe he was. Because in do the we, first, so, so do we want to go off belief or do we want to go off what we see? I'm going to go off a of belief. Is this believing seeing? <laughs> is seeing believing? <laughs> Definitely, seeing is, is believing. <laughs> <laughs> seeing is knowing. <laughs> so you're going Jerry Rice. I'm going Jerry Rice. I'm going Jerry Rice too, but for very different reasons. I don't think Peter Parker's committed to football. That's my concern. <laughs> Well, you, you, you have some outstanding information. I, I to show. I that love he's not committed to football. I love Jerry Rice. That's my guy. Him, Tim Brown together. I mean, that was that was the Raider duel right there. But I'm gonna have to go Spider Man. Man, Shane I mean, is the only person Peter, in the world that Peter thinks... Parker and Spider Man have a better chance of being the photographer on the sidelines than he does <laughs> being a wide receiver. He is a heck of a photographer. We know this to be true. He could, he could probably steal some signs pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> is Peter Parker actually Connor Stallion? <laughs> Tom Holland, Connor Stallions. <laughs> Shane's the only person in the world that hears Jerry Rice and thinks Raiders. <laughs> Damn right. He thinks, he thinks Raiders all the time. Coming up next, we're going to talk a little bit about the World Series that starts tonight with Steve Gardner of the USA Today here on Herat Sports Radio. We will be back.
we will be back. We will be back. We will be back. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. One ball, two strikes, two out pitch to Tucker. On the ground to second, should do it. Simeon goes to first, and the Texas Rangers. 90 wins in the regular season fly cross country. And their journey will bring them to the World Series for the first time since 2011. Seawall, the one-two. Swing and a high fly ball, right field. Playable for Carroll, near the line. Carroll under it, he's got it, and that does it. The Arizona Diamondbacks are going to the World Series. The Cinderella run of the Arizona Diamondbacks continues. They're the National League champions. Wrapping up hour number two here on Herd Out Sports Radio. I'm Ravi Lula. Andrew Rogers here with me as well. Joining us now on the War Horse Sportsbook Hotline is Steve Gardner from USA Today. He covers baseball for them. Steve, how are you this morning? I'm doing great, Ravi. How are you guys? Uh, we are doing fantastic. Excited for the World Series to start tonight. Uh, let me start with this. If somebody had told you at the beginning of October that Arizona and Texas would be matching up for the World Series, what would you say? <laughs> uh, I think you're trying to get me to make a sucker's bet somewhere. <laughs> you because, know, there's a yeah. bridge in Brooklyn I could sell you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. That's the same guy, I'm telling you. But, um, yeah, this is, is highly um, uh, illogical. Uh, unbelievable, but yet here we are, and these two teams have certainly earned the right to be there. They've been they've been outstanding. They've come through in the clutch, and when they're down, 
Um, so yeah, this is this is an exciting matchup, despite you know not seeing these teams as as household names by any means during really during the entire baseball season you know you, you mentioned not really being household names but the rangers did go out and buy a bunch of household mm -hmm. names i mean maybe they didn't have the best regular season but out of the two are they less surprising that they made it here out of the two matchups most definitely and you know the rangers at the beginning of the year were you know were and always did have one of the top offenses in all of baseball mm -hmm. but we couldn't really take them seriously because they had this huge slump in the middle of the season where they looked like maybe one of the worst teams in baseball <laughs> and that allowed the astros to get back into things you know that and the, and the mariners as well so that whole al west was just a you know kind of a a, a big dog fight there and yet this team has come together in october and looks like the team that was one of the better ones at the beginning of the year um even despite not having you know jacob de grom who they lost mm -hmm. at the beginning of the season which the i think people year. forget yeah yeah well when you talk about uh, you know going out and getting teams i mean that are getting uh, top players de grom was at the top of the list mm -hmm. you know this off season and and he was the guy that i think a lot of rangers fans and maybe the rangers front office felt like was going to put them over the top and give them, you know, that pitcher to have that ace in uh, in October, and yet they're here and Degrom is nowhere to be seen. Hey, so speaking about pitchers, the Rangers have Avaldi, Montgomery, and Scherzer as their top three. Arizona has Gallon, Kelly, and Fat as their top three. So knowing each team starting rotation, who do you think has the greater advantage there? Well, I, I would say just from the surface, you would think that Texas has the advantage. I mean, Evaldi has been been very good in the postseason. Jordan mm -hmm. Montgomery as well, and then Max Scherzer. Always, we we know throughout his career, every time you you think you want to underestimate him a little bit, um, he comes back to prove you wrong and and takes great delight in doing that. <laughs> so uh, those guys, because they're established, because. Uh, you know, we know them. Evaldi's had, you know, he's been on the postseason stage in the World Series before with the Red Sox. Um, we know a little bit, maybe more about them than we do about the Diamondbacks. Certainly about Brandon Fott. I mean, uh, he's a rookie who may he may be pitching better than any other starter yeah. in the postseason, even Absolutely. though he hasn't, even though he hasn't gone, you know, deep into games. He's had more swings and misses than anybody um, and, and has been excellent and has been kind of the, the stopper for them when they were when they really needed a strong start and needed to get back in the series uh, so far in these playoffs. He's been the guy to provide that. Uh, Steve, t talk me out of this here or, or maybe tell me I'm right. I, I don't feel great about the Rangers bullpen. Every time they go out there, it feels like they are just – uh, on some kind of high wire act, even though you do have some names there that you're familiar with. And, uh, you know, depending on how you feel about a role, this Chapman, I've never totally trusted him. Um, I guess talk to me about the Rangers bullpen. And, and is that in your mind, possibly where this series shifts? I think both bullpens will play a huge role in uh, in who wins this World Series. And and you're right, the Rangers have been shaky. Jose Leclerc has been able to to nail things down. They've leaned on him a lot. Bruce Bochy mm -hmm. has to to get those final outs, and sometimes more than three. Um, and Chapman, he's kind of like the wild card. And mm -hmm. and you're right, uh, and and very wild <laughs> a lot of times. The keyword wild there, he, yeah. Yes, he can't find the plate sometimes. So. When it, it comes time to match up, you know, when Corbin Carroll comes up late in the game, you know, or, or Alec Thomas or, or one of those guys, um, but especially Corbin Carroll, that's going to be the matchup that Bruce Bochy is, is probably going to turn to, is a oldest Chapman versus Corbin Carroll to get that big out. Um, so far in the postseason, you'd have to say that's an advantage for Carroll. But um, nevertheless, I think one of the things is the Rangers have gotten Josh Spores um, who was not great in the regular season has been lights out in the postseason, and that's been big for them. And uh, but yeah, I, I think this is one of those where, as we've seen in the postseason, starters aren't going very very deep into games, and it makes it a bullpen game. You know, maybe sixth inning, 
uh, certainly by the seventh, eighth, and ninth. So all of those guys are going to have to deliver. And if there's one weak spot in any of the chain um, in either bullpen, uh, it could cost them a game. Steve, Texas has been the far better offensive team this playoffs, but the D-backs do have the hottest hitter in baseball leading off their team and can tell Marte, despite how many bombs yep. Adolis Garcia hits <laughs> for the Texas Rangers. Uh, when you look at that piece of the game, how badly does Arizona need guys like Christian Walker, Tommy Pham, and Evan Longoria to heat up to be competitive at this stage? Yeah, I mean, Christian Walker was was one of the keys to the Diamondbacks offense this season, and uh, he's sort of been a no-show in the postseason. And, you know, as we've seen, things can turn on a dime. I mean, Corbin Carroll, earlier in the playoffs was in a pretty bad slump mm -hmm. and then turned it around late in the series against the Phillies. So I, I think it's still possible. Tommy Pham did hit a home run, um, you know, against the Phillies after slumping for a good long time. So you know, it's, it's certainly possible for guys to kind of put that behind them. And I think, you know, with a couple of days off, you get a little bit of a reset to where you're not looking at your, you know, your stats from the last series. Uh, you can kind of wipe that away and say, okay, we're starting fresh. And, uh, and I'm sure that's the mentality that, that Christian Walker is taking into, into this World Series. And, and he's going to be a, a huge part of it if the Diamondbacks are going to win. Steve, I want to I want to ask a little bit more of a big picture question here. I know you said you were excited about this matchup, but it seems like a lot of people in the baseball world are not as excited about it, mostly because – the top teams throughout the regular season got bounced really early in the playoffs this year. What level of concern do you have about that? Do you kind of just look at it as an aberration? Or I, I guess just talk me through that process, because there seems to have been a lot of hand-wringing about uh, the way the playoffs have gone compared to the way the regular season went. Sure. Well, uh, the thing is, though, you look at baseball, the baseball games themselves will tell you whether the series is uh, compelling or not, mm -hmm. first of all. Um, so we have the great unknown as we go into this World Series. But let me ask the other question is, for those baseball fans that say, oh, you know, who really cares about the Diamondbacks and the Rangers? Do you want, did you want to see a repeat of last year's World Series? Sure, yeah. I mean, I think Nobody wanted the Astros people, in there, right? <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, they complain about, about baseball and they say, well, it's the same teams all the time that, you know, I'm sick of the Astros or I'm sick of the Dodgers and, and we've seen too much of the, of the Braves this season. If you, want a, you know, if you want a little variety, this is the World Series for you. So I, I think it's one of those where people will find ways to complain mm no matter what the World Series matchup is. So why not just embrace it and say, hey, look, here are some people that maybe I'm not as familiar with. Let's see how good they really are. And then when you start seeing players like Gabriel Moreno, you know, the young catcher for, for the Diamondbacks, who you want to make some parallels. I mean, Yadier Molina as a 23-year-old, you know, led the St. Louis Cardinals or helped the St. Louis Cardinals to a World Series championship back uh, back in the day when nobody really knew who he was and and that was a team that wasn't very highly thought of either you know uh an 83 win team you know kind of like the diamondbacks coming in so we we know what yadier molina's career turned into could sure we do. be seeing the beginning of that kind of a player um you know those types of stories develop over time you could, you know, you could be looking back at this in, in 10 years and say, oh, wow, look at all those great players that we were just getting to know back in that World Series. So I, I, there, there's plenty of stuff that's compelling, at, at least for me. Steve, 30 seconds here quickly. If you were a betting man, where would you lay your Mattress Mac money on this series? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I still think the Rangers, the offense from top to bottom is, is what really impresses me. And there's no weak spot in that Texas Rangers lineup. Um, they've been able to bash everybody so far in the playoffs. And I think they end up doing it again in the World Series. Hey, Steve, we appreciate your time. Real quick, uh, remind me, who won that World Series that Yadier Molina was in as a rookie? Can you just remind um, me real quick? I believe the 
Cardinals did, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Oh, uh, sorry. We got to – I mean, he was in the 04 World Series that the Red Sox won, too. That's the one I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, but Mike Matheny okay. uh, was the catcher that year. <laughs> let's not get that wrong. Over the Tigers. Yeah. Yeah, let's not get that You're wrong. Talking Thank 06. you, Steve, for the clarity. I'm talking 04. That's all right. Steve, we appreciate you as uh-huh. always. Take care. Thanks, guys. See you, man. That's Steve Gardner from USA Today. Coming up next, we've got Mike Sauter. Talk a little high school football playoffs. Let's go. We will be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. Oh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Mike Sauter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mike Sauter. Oh, man, you're going to put me on the spot. Mike, Mike Sauter. Kicking off hour number three here on Hurt at Sports Radio. I'm Robbie Lula, Andrew Rogers here 
We are joined now by Mike Sauter from Herd at Sports and NEB Preps. But before we get to Mike, I want to tell you about our friends at the Teammates Mentoring Program, founded by Dr. Tom and Nancy Osborne in 1991. Their mission is to <clears throat> positively impact the world by inspiring students to reach their full potential through mentoring. One in three young people will grow up without a mentor, and the Teammates Mentoring Program is looking to help bridge that gap. Mentors and mentees meet in school during the day for about 30 minutes once a week to play games, chat, whatever comes up. You can find out more and learn how to become a mentor today at teammates.org. Our very own teammate, Mike Sauter, joining us here today. Mike, how are you this morning? I'm good. I just had to scratch my nose. Gosh, I can't hear myself talk. Can we get like normal? Get, yeah, we get a little more. Can we you guys get this is that it? Is that out? it? A little more juice? Yeah. Is that better? I'm gonna fix the camera. I'm telling you, I think break, it's I think but, it's this uh, cord because even when Avery right. was in, I had to turn it all the way up for you, you guys. Good? Is that better? Each other. It's all right. Yeah. Good. Better. Yep. Good. good. Okay. Straight. Hey, Mike. We were kicking. someone. Someone told me before we get started here. <laughs> yeah. Someone told me that this is the best hour of sports talk radio. Was that your wife? In a week. No. No. My kids are my wife, and I was like, well. I don't know, but you guys are all trying to tweet that news out. So I'll give you a second. <laughs> I, saw I'll wait for you. That's all right. No, that's I, I got that this morning. So, well, I'm good. Sure. I'm glad that people enjoy it. Mike, we were yeah. talking earlier on in the show because like we opened up with, hey, it's high school football tonight. It's cold, mm -hmm. but it's high school football tonight. NBI. And, you know, I was kind of going down the list and I asked Robbie, I go, is D like eight man? And he's like, yeah, D's eight man, but I'm not actually entirely too sure if it's eight man or not. So then mm -hmm. when you came in, you obviously cleared things up for us. But then we started talking about six man a little bit mm -hmm. and we're like, gosh, six man, how big is that football field? And you said what? It's the same as eight man. It's same as eight, which sure. means yeah. it is so open. It's like a soccer pitch. I'm made, point, right? Yeah, I'm pr I'm pretty sure it's 40 and 80 or 80, mm -hmm. you know, long and 40 across. I'm I'm pretty positive. But the wildest piece of information that he shared was <laughs> you can basically do whatever you want in it's six. It's basically man. like rugby out there. Yeah, it's just pitchy witchy woo woo. You just throw it around, whatever. And a lineman like you your center yeah. could also as, be your as leading long, touchdown scorer. As long as the play is started in six man, as long as the play is like you have to hike it, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be a traditional snap or like a backwards yeah, pitch or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's, it's, it's very a traditional much... snap. And then the, is the that first, not how you okay. start every play though? Yeah. A traditional snap has to be the first play and then our first, you know, mm -hmm. a hike. start the play. And yeah. then it has to be a backwards pass. As long as like, as long as the ball is touched by that person backwards, like they can throw it again, they can run, you can do whatever. So you have a lot of people don't because it's a little hard. I mean, it's really so, hard so as long just, as it's like a lateral. Essentially. Yeah, it's it's like so a, you have a the pitch. snap and then a lateral and then you can do whatever. You yeah, want. yeah, yeah. I would do that every. This way. sounds incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a jet sweep, you are actually running behind me. <laughs> hey, the six man state championship game will be, I believe. Yeah, it'll be the 17th of November in Kearney. If you would like to go, let's go. You Are you going? Maybe. Is Mike Sauter going? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> let's road trip. Out. I have. Go I didn't go last year, but I went to two years. I would road trip with Mike. Going? Are you guys kind of going? Fun. When, when's November seventeenth? Is that a Friday? Mm -hmm. Sometimes state championship yeah. games yeah, like Friday. Tuesday. Yeah. Um, yeah, we should do the show. It's the Friday before there. live from Carney. It's the Friday <laughs> before uh, the eight man and eleven man playoff finals on okay. that Monday and Tuesday at Memorial State. But they play. They play Carney. at UNK. At UNK. UNK? Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm kind of I'm let's let's see what we can do. Let's hey Shane, we're gonna be remote on November seventeenth. You can be here though. We're going to Carney. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shane's <laughs> like, yeah, get out of here. Um, no, that would be I would I would seriously run the most ridiculous offense if I was a six man coach. What are the um, scores in in games like that? Like the games lot. that you've been to a lot because like they're fifty you like know. eight man scores are high, so six man have to be yeah, six just as high or higher. higher. It's High like school. playing three on three full court basketball. Well, it's like flag football, basically. So, it's like, flag like football. you go like, like I remember one play when I was in college, and you know, intramurals play always worked for us. Always worked for us. It was trips right or left, center under. So you just center sni snaps the ball, the three, mm -hmm. the three that are right or left, and. The receivers, they just run it off, right? Like just sprint or 
do a post route or something, and the center just cuts right under. If we needed seven yards, uh-huh. you would get seven yards. If we needed five, you would get five. It it was a it was good for a solid five to fifteen yards every single time. See the intramural play that always worked for me, and probably would work in six man too, is the stop and go. Like you, you don't even need trips anywhere. Like just put one wide receiver out on the side. And they're going to run like a, a, a quick 10 yard route. They're going to turn. You're going to get a pump fake from the quarterback every single time the DB bites. And then the wide receiver just goes and you have a, a 70 yard. Well, not 70. Cause I don't know if it's 70 yards in. Well, I guess it could yeah, it's be okay. if, it's, if it's an 80 yeah. yard field, like a 70 yard touchdown pass. <laughs> like That play works all the time though. Yeah. Like, if you really think about it. Yeah. Um, now intramurals is easier than if you actually have no, but because you don't there. have a ton of, of, of bodies out there, it's harder to have help over mm-hmm. the top, right? Mm-hmm. So if you get a hitch and go. Uh, so here, go. here's a good example. So okay. Parkview Christian plays at 2 o'clock today in the playoffs. So their scores are 53 to 21, 60 to 14, 54 to 17. They lost a game 18 to 13 to Pawnee City. And then uh, 26, 12, 59, 16. So kind of normal. Ish normal ish. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of, did you guys see while we're on six man? This yeah. is wild. So, you know, people complain. I've been on this train, I've said this before about travel, mm-hmm. right? And like how the teams from Omaha have, that go past Lincoln, that's like a huge deal, right? Right. Well, there's a six man game today. If you did not know this, mm-hmm. and we've kind of where am I looking on the bracket here? You're, you're, you're looking. Um, well, I'm talking mileage. I know, but I want to see like the match. Pawnee City. Okay, Pawnee City. Got it. Okay. Four against a 13. Yeah. And they play uh, Sioux County. Sioux County. Sioux County is like as South Dakota, Wyoming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, border, the furthest as north. That's, that's, that's northeast Nebraska. You know where Pawnee City, northwest. Northwest Nebraska. Yeah, it's extreme, extreme northwest. Correct. The farthest northwest. Okay. They play Pawnee City. You know where Pawnee City is? About an hour, 10 south and a little east of Lincoln. Okay. Okay. So you're driving caddy corner across the it's entire eight, state. It's eight hours and 20 minutes or so, 16 minutes. So they left now. One way. They left yesterday. Oh, so they probably <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. I mean, the or, fans. or Wednesday. <laughs> like, the fans going to the game are leaving it's, now. It is, it is, it, you can go from Memorial Stadium to Chicago quicker. <laughs> Quicker than you can from Sioux County to Pawnee City for a six man game. That is say that one more time. You can go <laughs> from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln mm-hmm. is shorter uh-huh. going from Memorial Stadium to Chicago than it is from from Pawnee City to Sioux I County. Mean, just think about that for a moment. That's crazy. <laughs> like yeah. that's nuts. Yeah. And the and the hard part is if you're a passenger princess, like I would like to be in a car a road trip like that. You'd much rather go from Memorial Stadium to Chicago because you have four hours of sports. Well, actually, more five and a half hours of sports betting once you hit up. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're in Nebraska There's, and you're going to this high school game, you can't do anything. Yeah, <laughs> you just gotta I, drive. I am interested to see. I guess I haven't asked, but I'm interested to see what what Sioux County did. Did they leave Wednesday, stay in Kearney, and then get to? You know, stay in. And you know what's Carney worse about and, that too. And I'm not. I, I haven't seen any. They of probably it. left I'm, today. I'm just imagine. basing it off of uh off of sheer record. But Pawnee City's eight and zero. Oh. Yeah. Sioux County is five and three. Like I don't. If I can just base it off a of record here, it seems like Pawnee City would be like the team, the favorite, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so if you drive eight hours to lose, yeah. and then drive eight hours home, yeah. But think about the experience, though. Like, I'm sure that's it's great. Like, yeah. You know, I, like that's that's the part of sports that we don't talk about is the the like lifetime memories that mm-hmm. you will create with well, I'll tell teammates. you what though anytime just losing like in a big game like yeah. that it, it hurts mm-hmm. and how often well I guess in this case they would have to stay at the hotel that night probably they get would, over it by would, the time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by the time morning hits and you're driving home by the yeah. time they've taken the Oregon trail back home <laughs> yeah. then they're probably yeah. a, they're just happy nobody got dysentery and they didn't have to pour <laughs> yeah. a river in order yeah. to get back home um no that's that's crazy that is an absurd trip uh, to play a high school football game. Uh, good on them, though, because I know the, you know, I and I, I talk about it all the time, so I'm, I'm not throwing anybody else under the bus here. But, you know, the class A teams from Omaha, they're like, oh, man, we got to go to Kearney. We got to go to Grand Island. Right. We have to go to we have to go to North Platte. It's four hours, yeah. five hours out there. It's terrible. But you're going all I mean, eight hour trip for a high school football game. is That's bonkers. You could yeah. end up in Oklahoma City. by the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
you're, like legitimately, you're pretty, you're pretty no, much yeah, in Oklahoma you, City at that point. You're, you're, <laughs> I mean, you're Little Rock. Far like oh that's like six hours yeah, isn't it like, like you could get easy. to yeah you could get to Fayetteville and yeah, play University of Arkansas that. for six in less time <laughs> go a lot of places you get from here to, get to Denver yeah Denver you could, it's I was like Minneapolis is like a five six. yeah five minutes yeah you you basically could get from Omaha to Denver quicker than <laughs> then you could get from Pawnee City <laughs> to Sioux County yeah that's bonkers who would have thunk mike sauter would have started this off with some six-man talk today no everybody at home was thinking class a talk right away but no we started from the bottom now we're here listen we got my guy for a whole hour we'll get to all of it um obviously we do have class a we, hey hey wait, real quick eight man though real quick oh yeah we, we're going before, reverse order. before we get too far here because i see this con the the uh youtube comment can we talk about how great avery howard is at her job <laughs> Why? Because Avery Howard posted. She is comment. great. She is awesome at her job. <laughs> like, but is that why she is super underrated? She <laughs> is super. she underrated at this point? I think there's still people that don't even know. Like she's really good. Like I maybe, maybe too, because but... we, I've surrounded myself with her for like two or three years yeah. now that I don't think she, I thought she was always that good. She's way good. Uh, but I, I wouldn't consider her underrated. But maybe in the grand scheme of things. Um, I've that could I've, be right. I've told her that, like not publicly, but I figured, I just wanted to say it publicly. Like she is really good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have not her even on, joking. I'm what just... Wednesday? Yeah, we had her on Wednesday for a whole hour. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, oh, yeah. I've done a couple full shows with her as well. Yeah, wasn't she... the best hour of sports talk radio though. No, that was obviously the hour where we talked about whether you would want Spider Man or Jerry Rice as your uh, wide receiver. I one. had no idea what you guys were talking about. Well, I mean, it was pretty simple. I don't even know who those people are. You don't know who Jerry Rice is? What? You don't know who Jerry Rice is? I know who Jerry Rice is, oh, okay. but he looks a lot closer to Jerry Rice than he does. That's true. He does have the bald hair and whoever the Whoever you guys the, were talking about. You don't know who Spider-Man is? I know what Spider-Man is, but not the names of the people. When's the last time you've seen anything Spider-Man? Like a movie? <laughs> the very first one? Probably never. Never? You didn't see Tobey Maguire no, Spider-Man back in the day? I don't know who that is. <laughs> You know who Tom Holland is, though, right? No idea. Do you not watch movies at all? No. I don't know. What's the last movie you saw? Oh, we went, like, kids movie. What's the last non-kids movie you saw? I don't know. Oppenheimer? No. <laughs> Loved Oppenheimer. I haven't been. I don't know. I just, I was trying to name I go, a I go movie to a movie theater. theater maybe once or twice a year. Maybe. And it's usually a kids movie. Sometimes it's kids movie. Um, what was the last one that was... I don't forget. At least I Oppenheimer know. is is uh is real. We I mean, went it's, like two months ago. It's not like watching Spider Man because I know you don't like the fake stuff. You went two months ago to a movie. Was it a kids my movie? My kids. Yeah. Oh, I don't. My kids I don't care what happened yeah, in kids I movies. What, I forget what it was. I don't. But it was actually pretty good. I thought for a kids movie. I don't know. I do more of the um uh like I'm I'm trying to watch the Beckham documentary. Oh, I watched that. Yeah, I've watched episode one and two well that's it's kind of mm -hmm. wild it's really I, good i've yet to see it's any of it. really good it's good you should watch it yeah. anyway this is nothing to do with it's fine well it's funny because you bring up avery and now everyone's reminding us how much better she is at 20 questions than we are thanks daughter it's guess who not 20 questions <laughs> it is guess who. how dare you guess also who. i won the segment <laughs> i get you was listen this was a very much like josh hamilton home run derby moment like everybody's gonna remember avery for the moment I am Justin Morneau. I won the home run derby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sauter, um, give us this crazy stat about eight man here with uh, Nebraska recruit Carter Nelson. Yeah, Carter Nelson. So he uh, is in the, I don't even know what you call it. Nebraska Tri commit, I guess. I Tri say. Yeah, triple five hundred, triple five, whatever. You, you know how they say. have like stolen base leaders and home run hitters in baseball? Like when Acuna yeah. did the 40-40, people yeah. are like, oh it's my gosh, It's basically the, like a 40-40. 40, 40, 40, 40 70 40. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 40, I'm sorry, yeah. the 47. Yeah. First person I remember doing that was Jose Canseco when I was a kid. But um, anyway, the 40 40 club, all that, you know, those sort of things, mm -hmm. which is actually a real club now. Uh, Jay -Z, thanks, Jay Z. But um, Carter Nelson has, um, it's likely never been done in eight man or 11 man. Uh, I do know two six man people, thanks to my guy Tony Chapman for the, the nod on this. But so Carter Nelson has. 604 passing yards, 1,060 rushing yards, and 626 receiving yards. The only two players that have ever done that before that we can, and I, I mean, I talked to like history people that would know. Uh, the only two people that have done that are in six men, and that was Noah Velasic from Riverside just a couple years ago, yeah. and Luke Caston from Potter Dix a couple years ago. They're six man players. 
So uh, pretty rare error. Like, 500 I'm, receiving, 500 like, passing, wait, 500 I even, I even went, like, did Larry Frost do it? Because, like, he was kind of did a lot of stuff. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I talked to, The amount of like, digging you had to probably do. No, I, I didn't. I, oh, okay. You didn't. Yeah. You he outsourced. Tony, yeah. He outsourced Tony, his digging. Tony did that for me. Um, Tony Chapman did kind of went in on that for us, but or for me, but it was actually his idea like a couple weeks ago. He's like, he's getting close to doing this. Has anyone seen this? And so then, I mean, I talked to like the Nebraska High School Hall of Fame mm-hmm. uh, president, Chuck, last night. I talked to Stu, who's a historian, yep. basically. Yeah. Um, talked to my guy, Bobby Mills, who's also kind of a historian, historian on yeah. that stuff. And uh, that, that was, yard that was guy, what we came Mills. up with. So yeah, Carter Nelson with the triple 500. And think about this. If they make it to – there's a very real possibility that if they were to make it to the state final in Lincoln that he would have 1,000, 1,000, and 1,000. Because that's what, four more games? Yeah, three, four, yeah. Yeah, so because they play tonight and yeah. then – so one, two, three, four yeah. to win – to make it to the play yeah, the state they final. Did, yeah. Tonight's going to be a tough one. How's Dodge is always – How's Dodge is pretty really good. good. Um, they are – they face off at 5 p.m. tonight with Ainsworth. Because that's a little bit of a drive. Um, so, yeah, so four extra games, He yeah, could be. He could a, do it. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know how far you got in this. Would he be the first 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 ever? Oh, yeah, I, I for sure. <laughs> I don't know what the other I mean, I would say I mean, how crazy that yeah, would be. Like, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how much the six-man oh, guys beat that. the 500 mark by. You I know think I mean? that's like. Is Barry Bonds the home run leader? Come on. Guys. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. listen, I, mean, I don't know what the numbers of the six man guys were. I think were. that's a for sure. Like, I don't think that's even. Okay. I'm just I would, asking. I would be shocked. You're a resident we high could school find, guy. I could find, find, yeah. Why don't you find out? No Velocic was just a couple of years ago, actually. Um, as we playing, move playing up basketball at UNK into uh, 11 man, uh, obviously we've got class Real football. A. I didn't say it. That's I didn't say that. You wanted to. I know I didn't want to say it. It's. I mean, it is real. Well, I mean, it's it's. More, I don't even know why, but it's technical, right? I'll use <laughs> traditional football. It is the the traditional style of football we're used to mm-hmm. seeing. Uh, obviously, you've got uh, Class A and B, Class C and C one and C two as well. Yeah, question about C two real fast. Yeah, mm-hmm. if I can, if I can stop yeah, you there, ahead. is Cedar Catholic a team that gets all the way there again, Mike? Uh, it's that, gonna be tough. Like that. That's an underdog team of last year, though, too. Yeah, I. Mm. I don't think because so. Norfolk Catholic is Norfolk Catholic. They're the clear favorite um, in C two. Does anybody stand in their way in C two? Or Ord's lost two games, right? Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. were against Norfolk Catholic and Battle Creek when Battle Creek was number two to start the year and was number two the whole year. What's mm-hmm. Oakland Craig's loss? Norfolk Catholic. Oh, okay, but it was close at the beginning of the year. Is that what you just said? No, no he was That's talking just, about Battle no, Creek. Battle Creek. Right. Yeah, and Battle <laughs> Creek has some injury stuff they're dealing with that is going to be tough for them to move on too far in this thing and see two but oakland craig and nofo catholic or mm-hmm. you know c2 is inter- very interesting I would say. so you think uh who there's teams that legitimately have a shot to knock off Nor- norfolk catholic or no mm-hmm. not really it's gonna be tough yeah. oakland craig is the best shot probably Pro- oh yeah oakland craig or well that would be your newman final. as an 11 would be real tough okay like, that, that's that'd be an tough. interesting one they go out to mitchell and Again, though, both of those teams good. that you guys just mentioned would be the final. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. The is there, is there side, anybody the prior to the that? final? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. Like You said because Battle Creek's beat up a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that would be a tough Trent, one. Trent Ewer's out, which looks like he's probably out. That's going to be tough. Mm. Yeah. Carney Catholic tough. probably Carney can't Catholic provide. Steal one there? A lot of resistance. They're, yeah, they're a little still young. Next year's probably the year they get back in the For them? Yeah. E- even mm-hmm. against Battle Creek? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, do you mean this game? Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah, that could. I they could, could see be that there. Dependent just because of injury stuff. But uh, hopping over to C one, uh, Wahoo number one seed, Bo- Boone Central number two. Um, where's the where's the 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 cutoff line for you in terms of tiers in C one? Well, DC West is pretty good. DC mm-hmm. so Boone Central has been the number one ranked team in our coaches poll the entire year. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're giving the two. Yeah. It, that's just wild card point. So, right. Um, at, but DC West played, their two losses are Wahoo and Boone Central. And Boone Central was like 1914. Like it was close uh, in Albion, which is, you know, mm-hmm. saying mm-hmm. something. So, um, it's a little more open here. I, you know, DC West is scary, uh, but they go to Broken Bow. DC West probably 
maybe wins that. Pierce is defending champ. Keenan Valverde is really good. Um, that's a rematch against Ron Colley. Ron Colley is dangerous because they can score enough. Ashland uh, is is really good. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah. Eight and one, Ashland. Greenwood. And they lost to Wa- their losses to Wahoo. Um, yeah, that's the team I'm kind of paying really close attention yeah, to. Yeah, Dane right Jacobson now. or Brady McGill, probably the two best, you know, pure ish quarterbacks, I guess, in uh, C1. So. It's a little more more open, I would say. What about that Auburn Ogallala matchup it's in that seven ten? Harry Caskey's a good player. Ogallala's coming on um, towards the end of the year here. Beat Sydney. Um, that's Sydney's one loss is Ogallala two weeks ago. So, so out of the non Aurora Aurora at eleven is pretty dangerous. Okay, um, but that is a rematch of a game three. that Adam Central won like three weeks ago. Okay, but it was really close. Do you have a special rooting interest there because of your relationship Baylor? with some no. Creighton basketball player? <laughs> no, <laughs> Aurora's had some heck of players, man, come through there. It is there. Coach Peterson does a great, terrific job. They are, I'm telling you, like they've had some fans, Austin Allen. Like I mean, they've had some. Not even just guys with their breath. They've they that, really good guys. They've been really good. Uh, they'll they'll be. They're an eleven seed this year, but just wait. They're coming. Yeah, they'll be fine. Booker's only a sophomore, so. Uh, out of the lower classes, so below lower class is that what we're saying? They're lower than class, like lower enrollment. The Leonardo okay, that's what, of okay. the Titanic. I just want to be real clear. Enrollment. Lower. I've enrollment. said that before, and I got yelled at by people. I mean, so the I enrollment is less in the yes, in the class C fine. and below, right? Yeah. Is that fair? No, that's fair. Okay. In the lower enrollment classes, is C one the most competitive in terms? Yeah. Of, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, the one yeah. you're keeping the eye on. Yeah. Is yeah. it the most competitive of all the classes? B is pretty competitive. B is pretty good. Yeah. You got Scott, you got Bennington, you got Platteview, Platt Smith. Sorry, yeah. Platt Smith. Yeah. They're all very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else in Class B? B is uh, Waverly is way good. Okay, Waverly. So That's Platt an interesting one. Blair, Scott, Elkhorn really North, good. Elkhorn North, good. Um, York, York plays you in a phone booth, um, kind of like Platt Smith. Yeah, yeah. They just yeah, want to real tough. beat your head. Yeah, in. defensive football. Yeah, team. okay. Um, Norris is pretty athletic. That one could be a lot of points in Grand Island against Northwest. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, yeah. But Waver- Waverly's defense is pretty good. Class B and C1, most competitive yeah. of the group. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit of Class A. Okay. Football. I also want Sauter's choice on who's upsetting Bennington this year. It's fair. Okay. If they, I are. think it's more yeah, if they get upset. Yeah. There's more who, who of a chance to be. than in years past. So I hold think. on to I that got, thought. I, I mean, he's got one in his head already. Yeah. He's he's rip roaring and ready to go. Uh, coming up next, we will talk some Class A football matchups as well. Right here on Herd at Sports Radio on ESPN Omaha 590, ESPN Tri Cities, and KFOR in Lincoln. We will be back. We'll be back.
we will be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. We will be back. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. Harbor, he's taking a shot downfield, wide open end zone, caught touchdown. It's Malachi Coleman. Nebraska, they make you play with all 11, right? Heinrich gets the snap, back to throw. Pass in time, steps, throws, pass, caught by Fanoni at the 20. He's to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Nebraska. Thomas Fanoni leaps in the air. Clutch the football and then had open turf into the end zone. We have to continue to go like this and just say we're playing as the Huskers. Purdy to give to Grant. Grant left side. Another score for the Huskers. Uh, these guys are learning by fire. Harper keeps a seam. Harper lowers his head into the end zone. A touchdown for the Cornhuskers. This is a personal deal. You know, I, I hear stuff about the offense and everything, and like he. We are not as good on defense if it was if it weren't for those guys. Another low snap. Allmeyer steps up in the pocket. Throws middle. He's got his man. And at first down as the ball comes out. Tommy Hill has it going the other way. Gets to his own sideline. Another big turnover for Nebraska's defense. These guys fight. They fight from the University of Nebraska. And it went for 35 yards. And Keldrick Moody, welcome to Lincoln, Nebraska. The introduction made by Deshaun Singleton. You fight if it means you die. You fight, fight, you fight. And take for what's what we want. Enough of this fight for something good to happen. 
Who's the guy that's supposed to make the difference? I'm surrounded by it. And you guys freaking do it. We on the same page? Yes, fight, fight, fight! Woo. If we die, we die here on Herd Out Sports Radio. We're trying not to die. You, you forgot the F. Yeah, I, I mean, I Shane just bleeped me. It was in there. You just missed it. Um, yeah, no, we don't say that on the radio. That's Andrew Rogers. I'm Ravi Lula. Mike Sauter here with us as well. We never say Frank on the radio. As we continue with our high school uh, playoff coverage, uh, we're brought to you by the War Horse Sportsbook. Uh, this is what we'll call this the sports cleanup for the week because we're cleaning up our coverage of the high school playoffs as they get started today in the 11 man realm and continue with eight man as well. Everybody gets jamming tonight. Everybody it's gets jamming. jamming. Uh, War Horse Sportsbook, no bets, no glory. Best place in Nebraska Everybody. to place your sports bets. All right. As we. Everybody, Bo. Everybody. Uh, Everybody. Let's move on to Class A here. Wait, wait. Yep. Can I ask my question? Sure. My one thing? Yeah. Sauter. Nervous. If there was a team to upset Bennington this year in Class oh. B, who would it be? Scott. All right. You heard it here first. Yeah. Matt Versal up next. Scott. You could. <laughs> Scott or Wait. Like, if if the seeds play out, like, Scott, Waverly, that if that is a semifinal, I'll probably be it back. Scott and Waverly? Yeah. If that ends up being a semi, I, I would like There it is. There. All there right, you sorry, go. Robbie. Now you go. No, it. that's fine. Yeah. Take, um, take us to A. Let's go. If, if York, I will say if York Bennington play, that game will be ten to seven. Mm. If the, that ends up seven. happening, and if it's York just, Bennington both defense just they awesome. Okay, that's like, what we like to call a slobber knocker. Great. That's what we call Big Ten West. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's Minnesota Iowa all over. Again. Uh, you love to see it. Twelve ten. Here we come. Uh, yeah. All right, in Class A, obviously all year it's been Omaha West Side, and then everybody else. I assume there's nothing that's changed that in your mind. Yeah, I, I mean, everybody. <laughs> yeah, nothing's changed that. I, I don't think there's. I mean, if. Yeah, I don't. I don't see a, a path um, for any for that changing. I just don't. And that's okay to say that out loud. Yeah. Like they've been that dominant. Right. They could have, if they really wanted to, they could have put up ridiculous, <laughs> you know, numbers <laughs> against people. Um, yeah. They called off the, the, yeah, a lot. pretty quickly. Like a most lot. of the time. Yeah. So, I mean, even in the, you know, this Creighton prep game that they've got today, that game was what, 35 nothing yeah. at halftime, maybe worse. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a rivalry game. 42 but... nothing at halftime, maybe. And it ends up being 56 nothing. Yeah. Um, the rivalry one great. thing is just the and they're built like for weather fine like it's not a problem yeah um because they can run it i mean you know but we saw against millard south yeah, the high fine. wind did affect the passing game right. a little bit yeah with everybody yeah okay so with this west this side prep, game. prep west side though like it's a rivalry thing west side's playing a lot better a lot better uh or preps playing a lot better than they were than earlier they were. in the year i mean you gotta realize that was a super they, young team right? yeah the up front super young. yeah and they rebuilt their lines basically and have a freshman playing defensive tackle, you know, rotating it that, that it took some time, right. Mm -hmm. Like to, to get that done, but then making the playoffs is a step is a pretty good step for the way the season started. I think that was just the ultimate goal this year with the, the roster kind of mm -hmm. changing. Um, but you know, last year they were a semifinal team and, and this year you, you look like, or we had to we lost a lot. Moving, moving on, but I, I just don't, I don't see a path for them to win tonight. So West Side, mm -hmm. where would if they go the distance, mm -hmm. they go undefeated, mm -hmm. they win it all. Where would this team rank among like uh, the one best? of the best, one of the best ever? Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's a uh, question. Eighty five Miller North probably in that. Uh, it's eighty five 80, prep. Eighty five prep. Oh three Miller North. Oh three Miller North. Yeah, or those that, are kind of that conversation. Consensusly, the best yeah, two teams in right. state history. Yeah, yeah. They, this they would be right up. They'd there. be in that neighborhood. Yeah, uh, margin of victory is something, right? Like yeah. if if it, I mean, they got to finish the job and they sure. have right. to win by a lot. It's a, you know, it's a big if. There's there's yeah. a lot there, but yeah, there's um, four weeks. Four weeks of football still. Yeah, to go. just with the talent, uh, that prep team. Uh, that 85 prep team had like 15 division D1 one guys athletes. Yeah. Um, so that says a lot, right? But this, I mean, if you look at this Westside team, they have 
one, two, three, four, uh, four guys with that are power conference committed or offers right now. Mm-hmm. If a um, walk on to Nebraska, um, Rezac quarterback Anthony, we'll see um, where that ends up. But obviously, I think everyone knows he's really good and mm-hmm. has FCS offers and stuff. Um, yeah, and then you have even like D two guys if they want to be a lot of them up yeah. front. So uh Bo Ryan linebacker is a really good player. They they the talent is it's it's it's, it's there. It is uh, I mean just and this is not a knock on them. If you if you're comparing all timers 85 prep 03 Miller North, there is a little bit of a gap in terms of division 1 yeah, yeah, yeah. guys. Yeah. There was mm-hmm. just more on 03 Miller North. There was more on right. I mean 85 prep, I think you had NFL guys on that. Yeah, team. yeah, yeah. Um and, and same with with 03 Miller yeah. North. So um, that's maybe the the only real difference. But in terms of how they've played in their high school football season, mm-hmm. this team has been as dominant right. as anyone we've seen. They, they definitely have a chance to be go down as make an argument for yeah. one of mm-hmm. like the 15, 2015 uh, uh, Omaha North team with Calvin Strong. They killed everybody. They were fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 19 Bellevue West recently, too, where they gave up 65 points. I mean, in the whole season, the entire year, yeah, it was right. a stupid Wild. number. Um, Which West Side's not going to be far off from. No, that. yeah. I so mean. you're looking at like, yeah, it, and it's kind of like apples to oranges, right? Because if you look back, you know the way the game has changed a ton. That's why when I always said, "Oh, Zane Flores is the best pure quarterback to ever play in mm-hmm. Nebraska," and people looked at me crazy, uh, like, "Well." Eric Crouch won a Heisman. Like, I'm not talking. Yeah, I'm not talking. We're talking about different things. We're talking about pure passers. Yeah, like traditional yeah. quarterbacks. Yeah, like they, they're different. Um, yeah. So it's hard to compare eras like that. But because um, high school football in Nebraska has changed dramatically. Yeah. Even in the last 15 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like dramatically. So if you're going yeah. back almost 40 years to the mid 80s with prep, totally different mm-hmm. uh, scenario here. So it it is hard to compare. Yeah. But I also think it's hard to if. Westside finishes the job to keep them out of that conversation. Yeah. If they do. Yeah, that's like, the if, if, right? They do. Um, if they don't, who what do you think that looks like in terms of how that happens? Well, um like I mean, obviously it's the least likely scenario. Yeah, I mean Miller here, South, but. Elkhorn South. The, the the deal is up front, like mm-hmm. defensive lines. I look at Elkhorn South, Miller mm-hmm. South, defensive line. Obviously, we know what happened when they played Miller South. I mean, now that game was West 17. Side's defensive line is pretty dang good too. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but that game was 17-14 right, at one point. Right, like it was right. it was close And late. Bell West, like if Bell West can get by Papio tonight, that I'll be at that game. That game, I am super interested. Super mm-hmm. interested yeah. in that one tonight. Uh, that's the one I'll be at. Uh, you have Davon Hall back, McMorris back, Kaline feels like he's you know playing, playing better. better. CJ yep. Goff is running the ball better for Bellevue West, but. Eric Ingwerson playing defensive end against that old line Woo. is going to be a challenge. Um, Get the ball out quick. Yeah. Um, so and, <laughs> and Peyton Presido running the ball. It'll be can Bellevue West run the ball? That's going to be the thing. And another one, Gretna Omaha North. That could be like you know, yeah. I mean, fourteen Omaha to North seven. Hell. Yeah. I mean, it could be really low scoring just because defense points yeah, out. Low amount of points last week. Yeah. All right, coming up next, we're going to wrap up the week in the show with our guy, Matt Verzal. That's coming up next on Herd Sports Radio. We will be back.
we will be back. We will be back. We will be back. You're listening to Hurt at Sports Radio. Now let's find out what Matt Verzal is better at. Telling stories or making pizza. Matt, Matt, Matt. <laughs> Matt's an exceptional young man. Matt Verzal. Happy birthday, Matt. You know, Matt, he's a tremendous athlete. Matt Verzal. <laughs> Come on, Matt, Matt, Matt. <laughs> Matt, I'm with you. You know, like Matt Verzal, you're one of the sexiest people in the world, but you're not one of the most beautiful. How does that happen? Here is Matt Verzal. All right, Matt, thank you very much. Wrapping up the show here, wrapping up the week on a Friday with our guy, Matt Verzal, as always. Verz, how are you this morning? You know, hi, boys. How are you? We are doing pretty good. Tons of uh, high school football we're getting to today. How you feel? about the playoff starting this week? Uh, it's, it's always good to get to winning season. It's, yeah. it's a fun time. and That's kind of the mindset I try to just get into the boys. I'm like, if you're thinking about anything but winning, you might as well just check her in right now. So um, I, I like – I just like this time of year. It, it's <laughs> – it, it is what it is. <laughs> There's no – this is just why you do it. It's why you get to this point and it's why you, you practice and you lift and you study and you do all these things. So now you get this, the rubber meets the road and it is winter go home. And there's no better thing than that. Hey, Verz, uh, Terman is a math teacher, correct? If I remember correctly. Nope. Oh, he's not. Okay. That's, hey. that's other, other Terman is a math teacher. Oh, math got, teacher it. History. got it. Okay. Cause I, Cause you know, I didn't know if you guys were 
kind of already knew where your playoff standing, where you were going to be before they last all Thursday. Do that. They all do that crap. Yeah. <laughs> Felt like it maybe – did you kind of leave yeah, a little man. on the – little meat on the bone <laughs> on Thursday? <Yeah. laughs> hey, dog, watch this. Let all the games end. The NSA will calculate it, then we know. Okay. Yeah. I just said – I just saved you 45 minutes of a spreadsheet build. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, yeah. So I just was, you know, be, I, my thought was, you know, you played gross, you know, your back to back weeks mm-hmm. playing gross. And like, you know, did you just not show everything? Like, what was that? You know, did both teams kind of just know, hey, this is where we're at? Um, but no, it's, I'm sure there was maybe some uh, math being done before that. Oh no! They the the rest of them love it. They like, they freaking love it. They got this sheet and if, yeah. if this team <laughs> wins this game and then we this and that. And I'm like Jesus Christ on a crutch. I was like, what <laughs> are we doing here? On a crutch? You never like, heard. Let's that. just sit here and, huh. and hang out and have some fun and all that. They 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 know too. Right. <laughs> so they'll, they'll, talk, <laughs> they'll talk me with that stuff. I'm just like, oh, okay, neat. I was like, just tell me what time we play. That's yeah. All I need, all I need to know. Or you but like, yeah, some people, some people like that stuff. Mm. Virgie, you're like, hey, I became a football coach, so I didn't have to do math anymore. Like, what are we <laughs> yeah. doing here? No, I actually, I'm very good at math. I was going to say, he's got to count the number of orders he gets. That, you know. No, I got a degree in finance, so I don't, I don't see the need, though, to calculate something somebody's already calculating for me. Yeah, mm. that's totally fair. Uh, you do, uh, as as Sauter mentioned, the back to back matchups is a little bit unusual. Um, is there anything that that you kind of think about differently when you when you have a, a situation like that where you're playing a team in close proximity like you, like you are this week? Um, yes and no. I, I mean, there's things by this point in time of the year, you are what you are. And can you run little compliments off of things? Yes. Are you going to make wholesale changes? No. Do I think Gross is going to come out and play one of the more like the most physical game we've played this year? Yeah, I do. It's Gross. Mm-hmm. Gross doesn't like Scott. We don't like Gross, and it's good. It's a fun, hard-hitting, mean game. And and I we had mom football on Monday and and. We're watching film, and I said, this is not a mom game. I'm like, you're not going to like this game. <laughs> and they're like, why do you say that? And I was like, because there's going to be a couple dudes over there on Ghost. They're going to shove your little baby down again, and you're going to get pissed. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to think it's a penalty, and I'm not going to, and, and that's just the way it's going to go. And so they, they, they get a kick out of that. But, no, it's – this this is just the time. It is that season. And, and if you, by now, like I tell you guys earlier in the year, my goal by week four is to not coach. Mm-hmm. You've seen everything we're going to see. There's nothing I can do for you. I can drill you. I can run you through stuff. I can say this is what we think they're going to do. But when we get down that field and the hits start popping, you have to figure it out. I cannot come out there. We only have three timeouts, and Terman gives me no authority to call any of them. <laughs> so you got to be men, and you got to talk to each other, and you got to figure it out. And so they they did a nice job. Gross, I, I love I, I love how they go at it. They just go at it aggressively, mm-hmm. and and it's fun. And it's you know you're gonna you're gonna not succeed in plays with Gross. They're going to get you. 14 for them. Noslish is really, really good linebacker. Nobody will ever probably or has heard of him. And it's very, very – everybody should know him because he is he is not the biggest human being on the field. I will throw him out there as the toughest at any weight, pound for pound. I'll put him up there against anybody. But he will get after it, and it's awesome. And he's – I shook his hand after the game. I said, I love to watch you play football, bud. And I said, I, I – I, I hope you're. I hope you have as much fun as it looks like you're having. We're, and they don't. The kids are like whatever crazy old person. Don't talk to me. I'm like, yeah, I get it. We're talking. We're talking like five seven one fifty five one sixty is yep. Nazbish. And I and I'd alley up with him any night. I, if I got into it and I saw him walking down the aisle on my side, I'd be like, yep, we're good. <laughs> South Omaha boys. 
Verse. They are, man. I they're, know. Yeah. They're tough. Verse, I kind of want to change gears here and, and talk about Nebraska for a hot sec, but I think there's a, a good connection to to high school as well. Young offensive linemen will be seeing the field um, in the coming weeks for Nebraska with all these hurt bodies just to fill positions. Say how, his name, Sam Sledge. I'm just about say to, his I'm name. About say to his say name. It. How excited are you for guys like Sam Sledge and Gunnar Gatula to get their reps early, and how can these early reps really impact their future at the school? Uh I mean, it's, I don't know how much, I don't know how much Gatula will play. They talk about him a lot, but from some of my people, he's still got a ways to go. Um, the sledge kid is, is the prize of your class. I mean, he's, he's a big, athletic, mean kid. And it's everything that you want in lineman to be like, if you want to pattern what Nebraska will probably continue to acquire for linemen yeah, yeah. is that mm-hmm. it, it, they, they, the athleticism has to increase because the athleticism of the defensive lines have increased. Mm-hmm. And then if, if the more athletic kids you can get, the better. The fact that, that Sammy started at tight end and then he moved down. He was, I worked with him at a camp once and I was like, well, you're probably going to be a guard. <laughs> he didn't really like that. <laughs> but you know, when you go back into the to the history into the annals of Nebraska football, you look at Searles even. You know, Searles, mm-hmm. those guys were athletes. They, you have great hands, you can hit a baseball, you're good at golf. You're not just a big human being that goes out there and kind of gets in the way. Weger, mm-hmm. you know, go down the line. Chris Dishman was a state champion or not state runner up wrestler. Jeff Ogard tooled on him our senior year. <laughs> but you had these big you had these big human beings that were just athletic. And it wasn't an anomaly. They're they're out there. Mm-hmm. I just got some pictures or somebody sent me some film and so apologize that I'll tweet out your Twitter handle, but I was a kid in Stanton. I think his name's like yeah. Ren. Yeah. Buddy. Mm-hmm. I mean that's that's a big athlete. He needs to get to camp mm-hmm. and so they can see his feet in in person, but he's got great feet. You can tell he's an athletic kid. Mm-hmm. So yeah, excited for Sammy. Um and the opportunity. You know, he, he can go out there and be awesome. Or he can go out there and lay an egg. But if he lays an egg, you got plenty of time to get him better. For me, probably my bigger curiosity in it is how well level two and level three are prepared Mm -hmm. because with with injury and attrition now i can really get into okay how many how many layers are you preparing to be starters and if if the kids come in that that aren't so evans jenkins is a great example he rolled in and it didn't drop off but i've been i've been i've been in his camp for a long time you know got great feet he's an old wrestler where's 51 i mean it's it's all (laughs) awesome Mm-hmm. It's Ver- Ren, Ren Brown is the Ren, Ren Brown from Stanton. Yep. Versus, he's yeah. a junior. Six five two six. He is? Yeah. All right, great. Yeah. And then you got you got the Patel kid out of Albion too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean there's there's they can do a lot of internal repair locally. If there was enough mm-hmm. tables in this place, I would stand on every table and say Sam Sledge. I like I've you can't pound the table hard enough, and I there are plenty of tables school. here, and I would love to see it. I, I okay, <laughs> but if you look at the, they had to be patient with that, but they still have to. right. Yeah, because yeah. the long term plan is a is a four for three. Right. Yes. If you maintain his record, you're gonna have him for three. He'll be gone after that fourth he, year. You can't. He was just so undervalued, rated, whatever you want to say in high school. It was it was terrible. Like but, it was. But see that that's disservice. the beauty of it. Though, like, Keo, Tenniper, Young. Solich, McBride, they all had such a finite eye of what the kid could be, mm-hmm. right? And and that's the beauty of us being in Nebraska and our football being viewed as less at the high school level. Is you can go in and take these gems and mm-hmm. people roll their eyes and then you go have a kid two years later as an All-American. Yeah. Matt Verzal, good luck this week in uh, your playoff matchup and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, boys. Thank you, Verz. That's our guy, Matt Verzal, uh, owner over at Pies on Feet 3, former Husker. (laughs) And we will – that's our week. We will be back next week recapping Nebraska-Purdue, tons of high school football as well, all that and more 
on Monday on Herd Sports Radio.